Evan, there's one missed in here, right here. There's two different sheets for Jenna Sama because they were clipped together. It's sticking out the top. Um, so we'll do the, so calling me to order. Um, are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda? Of course. Shane? Um, I would like to add my resignation from the Racial Justice Committee and from uh, the Development Review Board, just clarifying previous agony. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Uh, Duncan? Um, I have a couple in <clears throat> whether they get whether some of them get brought up under select board issues or not. I, I don't really care, but I don't want to lose track of at our last meeting, we had a discussion about the library and the fund and the checkbook that it had. Yeah. Um, I've been doing a little bit of research, so I don't, I don't need to have that a discussion tonight. I'm doing some additional research, but I think we should invite members of the library board to come and have a discussion about. Let's do that when Rosemary is here. Yes. Um, Thank you. Okay. But I just don't want to lose track of it because, yep. you know, it just didn't be appearing anywhere. Um, another one that I don't think we have to decide on tonight, but again, I don't want to lose track of it, is the ARPA funds discussion about whether we should spend those funds down and in essence create a reserve balance. Um, yeah. So again, it's, you know, ARPA funds discussion about whether we use the funds as operating as operating capital and end up with a reserve yeah. fund. Yeah. Um, the third item is uh, we had a specific request from Dave Williams to deal with the dilapidated buildings yeah. issue. I think we owe it to a member of the public to I agree. He was invited to come if you wanted to bring up in public comment, and he sent a letter instead. And uh, I just think we're a little too packed tonight for that. And there is some motion happening. So I would propose we just push that out the meeting. Uh, this is okay with me if it's okay with, you know, I think Dave is looking for a response from, I, I know Brian emailed him. I haven't seen the result of that email, so I don't know what was said or wasn't said, but. He did address the, the board. letter to the board as well. So I think we as the board should respond. have an obligation to respond in some way, shape, or manner. Um, yeah, I'll reach out to him and talk to him um, myself. And also I reached out to health officers directly too and asked for them to follow up. Okay. And the fourth thing is, and again, this is maybe just an update and maybe something that we need to keep on our agenda. I, I was going through an old set of minutes actually looking at the approved form that we came up with for the health uh, for the uh, dilapidated buildings yeah and i just happened to notice that there was a discussion about the revolving loan fund and a need to submit a request for an extension uh for that i guess maybe brian can give us a, a status update on where that was and it was also mentioned in there that we were going to try and establish a campaign to solicit um proposals for the RL rlf um i think facebook was mentioned but yeah just so i'm looking for a status update okay so i'll put that under the follow-up and next steps okay okay anyone else uh, I had wanted to ask permission from the board or give the board an update on uh, changing the date, the due date for the um, RFP for the construction project uh, with BEC for the three acre stormwater permit. BEC stormwater. Okay, got it. That's the follow up. So we'll do that as. Um, after number 10, followed by the revol revolving. Okay. Um, just a quick comment on the revolving loan fund. Um, Can we just hold it until we get to that? 
we have a lot to get through and it will what you're about to say will likely spark conversation i was just going to say that if we can bring it up at the next meeting i have a lot more time to prepare and could give a better status update than i can off the top of my head okay uh are you okay with that Duncan? Uh, i'm sorry he wants to push off the revolving loan fund discussion for next meeting. I'm fine with that as long as we don't lose track of it. Okay. <clears throat> Which we obviously did yep. between August of 22 and now. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> I'm getting, I, this is totally um, unrelated, but I'm trying to log in and I'm getting a login. Yes, login limit reached. Is that? That's an issue that we're having with our clients. Okay. We need to fix that. That needs to go to top of the list. I'm not likely to get on. Is that yes. what I'm hearing? I would keep trying. I've had it before and kept trying and was in. It, it, I'm um, trying to say that there's too many people logged in at this present moment for Duncan to log in. Must be those. On the guest <laughs> network. On, on, that we have issues with the guest network. I have an appointment with them. Uh, I can check my calendar, but I have an appointment yeah, coming up. I would think that Duncan ought to be able to get around the guest network. A select board member ought to be able to. Well, log no, on. anyone I, should. I would make a motion that you could. That's <laughs> uh, why do we have so many keys cut? Uh, because we were out of keys. For what? For this building. How many keys do we have? Uh, uh, I would have to ask Rosemary for an inventory. I know the ones that we have. I know the, the reason we cut them was for uh, Justin Mason and Anne. I don't remember Anne's last name, but uh, uh, the part time individual working for the village. Okay. Uh, neither of them had keys, and we didn't have any keys to give them. So we cut keys for them and cut a couple extra keys for the front door uh, for general use. Okay. And those, I assume, are still kept in the vault under yep. the little key thing there. Maybe a good time to bring up by uh, if we should get a key box on the front door for keys that we'll be able to use. But we can not talk about that. If we do. That's Rosemary's. We need Rosemary here. She's in charge of uh, the build, the town office yeah. access, I think. Yes. Um, okay. okay. Um, approve and review minutes from April 10th and 17th. I don't know. What All okay. sets. Was that a second? Uh, yes, both sets. Both sets, and that's a second. Okay, Duncan has a second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right, let's have it. Uh, select board issues and concerns. I have a quick one, and it's more of an update. Um, when we, when the select board approved the length at our last meeting, I have been working with our regional representative, and he just asked for a couple of things to be added. And I told him that we wouldn't be able to even get that to him until after our second meeting in May, and he's fine with it. But we'll probably be approving that again next meeting, just as a heads up. So the emergency plan? Yeah. OK, sounds good. Thanks for the heads up. Any other issues or concerns or celebrations? All right. Celebration. I have a friend that just turned forward. Yeah, that's not it. Uh, next the up, library. treasurers. Yeah, treasurers report. Uh, is there anything from Rosemary? Uh, no messages or anything from Rosemary. I can do my best to answer any questions you have about the orders. Is she on a cruise or something? She is. I do have a question. You said you were going to bring up the light that library fund under issues and concerns or is that going to be a it's going to be when rosemary's here okay. well he just rosemary's said he had done some research, research. i've done some initial research and i can tell you what i've come up with but i, I i'm it. missing one key piece that i think would be useful if you prefer to discuss it after that piece that's fine 
Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Uh, plan purchases. Can I can I make one request to Brian to pass on to Rosemary? Sure. Um, and I don't know if she would be planning on doing this anyway, but I think given the way that we're now reviewing the invoices, it would be really useful for each board member to get an invoice edit list, um, which she can print right out from NEMREC. Um, and it, it, you know, it, it would answer, well, it would, it would give you the information on the key, for example. Um, well, there wasn't it wouldn't answer your question. That, but, yeah. 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 Um, I just think that would be really useful for each of us to have. I would like it. Yeah. I don't know if other members would like it or not, but okay. in our email. Or um, it could, or we could even have it right here as we're reviewing it. The invoice edit list basically is uh, a listing of each and every check that was written uh, between the last meeting and this meeting. Right. Um, so it's you know it's the orders basically. Is it essentially the same thing as the as the paper inside inside uh, the folder? If you open the folder up, could be. <laughs> Like I like that page because it has the memo. Um, That's why I question. I like that one. This isn't actually the invoice. Yeah, this this is the invoice edit list. This one. I gotcha. That's one we used to get. Okay. Right. Yeah, we used to get that. Yeah. Yeah. I I just think that would be useful for us to get because it's a real quick, easy reference for us to quickly go through. Okay. And if we have any questions on anything, then we can grab and highlight those. Yeah. Okay. okay. I've got a note to ask Rosemary about that. Um, plan purchases. All right. For we've got just one plan purchase. Uh, that's for public works estimate from Allegiance. Or Jack. Yeah, what's the Jack for? Uh, honestly, I have, I would like to know more than I, I don't. I actually talked to Jason today. Um, and my understanding it is a heavy duty Jack to lift the, the big trucks, the big tandems. So, floor Jack. Uh, yeah. It's, but I, it may not be what we think of as a traditional floor jet, but it's same concept. Do we already have one that broke? I don't know the answer to that. So we've had tandems for how many years? I haven't either needed this or? I don't know if this is a replacement or an addition or I don't know the answer to that. I had the same questions and I would like, <laughs> Yeah. What activities do we need the jack for? Is it a convenience thing? Jack. Jack, right. Thanks. It's very helpful. Uh, <laughs> I always say the obvious on that one. Usually what I do. We just have let's let me text Jason. We'll come back to it. Yeah. Next up is Johnson I Rail. Oh, well, I need to talk. Can you text Jason and ask him? Will I talk? Thanks. Okay. Um, Johnson Rail Trail Committee request for select and select uh, request for select board liaison. Uh, we don't have anybody from the committee here, but there is a request for a select board liaison. Um, so if there's somebody who is knowledgeable about the discussions that are happening, I'm not sure if anyone here is interested in being that liaison, but I told them I would ask. If no one else has any real interest, I would be interested. I'd move that Shane be the select board liaison. Board liaison with the rail trail committee. Second. We have a second. Any uh, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Thank, thank you, thank Shane. You, and thank you. Okay, that was easy. Shane, do you live near the rail trail? I'm old enough to say I qualify. Well, I just by proxy. Right. <laughs> yeah. In the village. Yeah. In the, yeah. That neck of the woods somewhere. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, next action item is request an update for the uh, rail trail purpose statement. It's on packet page six. Um, changes are in red. Essentially, the request is for the first, one, two, three, the third paragraph um, to have the committees, to allow the committees to request authorization from the board so that they can act on initiatives that they come up with themselves if there is commitment from specific members of that committee. So essentially they would still have to get permission from the board, but they'd like the ability to act. And they felt like reading it didn't allow them that, I'd say luxury, but I don't think it's a luxury. Uh, so that was a request. First request. Second request is um, they just ask that we repeat that same general sentiment about specific actions and recommendations um, for regional community networks. Um, so just thinking that private sector, state entities, um, other committees of the town and that committee themselves, I saw the select board, um, aren't all of the stakeholders. There's an additional stakeholder of regional community, uh, community networks. So am I interpreting this to mean that this will be included in basically all committees for the statements? Well, no, it's not necessarily. Even, this is specific to this one, so it wouldn't necessarily apply to other committees, no. Shouldn't it? Well, I don't know. Other committees aren't on our agenda. <laughs> could other committees? But they could. Sure. Yeah, this could yeah. serve. We don't have, I mean, honestly, well, we don't have purpose statements for all of our other committees. Our other committees have often, over the time and over the years, um, suggested their mission statement and brought it to the board. And they continue to do so. They'll make modifications to it and bring it to the board for board approval. Um, so if we wanted to ask them to come up with something like this, we certainly could, uh, but they tend to have mission statements as opposed to a pur purpose statement. Well, if you if you folks are peaceful, it just seems to me like we ought to have some kind of a blanket committee statement that, you know, that says you have these powers, these ability to act with select work commission. But I'm certainly peaceless. We've been going along this way for a long time. And, okay. Shoot it down. I hear what you're saying. Shot I just don't think this is the time to broaden the conversation. I, I agree. I but, think that would be a four or five hour meeting in itself. I think so too. Maybe honestly, let's meet this week again. You know what we could do, and I, we should do this. Um, I asked Lydia a few months back to compile, or maybe six months back, to compile a list of all of the committee mission statements mm -hmm. and put it in a document. So maybe we can circulate that. Do you mind putting that on your list or yeah. asking Lydia just to circulate it? You don't have to do it, but she could. Um, Sounds like a five hour meeting. So we can at least, well, you can, we don't have to meet about it. If somebody yeah, wants yeah. to add it to an agenda, we can bring it up. And if not, everyone will at least have it. Mark just wants to have another meeting. Uh, <laughs> well, I was awake that last meeting. It didn't even feel like a meeting. <laughs> Except I was sitting in the Okay, park let's, let's the keep clock. focusing because there's a lot to get through. So, okay. is everybody copacetic with the requested changes? I have a question about. No. The first change. Yeah. The way you explained it sounds fine to me, mm -hmm. but the way that it reads sounds a little clunky. Okay. I wrote it. <laughs> Very offended. Okay. I'm well, I'm really you. sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay, nice. okay. So the committee may request authorization from the board to act themselves with a commitment of specific committee member. Uh, specific committee member. I'm sorry. You mean it's a little clunky. Hey, what do you want to say? I don't know, but. Um, so a point of clarification, what did they have an idea of what kinds of things that they might want to see approval to act on their own on? Um, basically, the sentiment was a there was a mix of the committee, some of which wanted to very much just be um, idea generators and um, make proposals for what the town could act on. The other portion of the committee, um, very much wanted to be doers. Like they didn't, they said they didn't volunteer for this just to sit back and watch somebody else 
do something or not. So they wanted to be actively involved in um, making changes. And no, they didn't get into ideation. It was really their first forming meeting. So ideation hadn't, it did start a little bit, but it didn't really go far because they had to, you know, organize themselves a bit. Well, I said when we set the committee up that I really think that this is the direction I want them and you know all of our committees to go is is taking a more proactive role in looking at grants and and things like that. Um, and I, yeah, I think maybe the language could be adjusted a little bit. I kind of agree; it, it is not totally clear. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what. A commitment means in this context. We could just um, end at the period instead of the comma. But yeah, sorry, I, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Question. Um, we, I did get a message that we have a committee member on Zoom who was okay. bless you. Mm, is like to try and answer your question. Though, so. Okay. Well, before before we get to that, I just I guess my my general comment is I I don't want to set up a situation where the committee is working at cross purposes with either us or if if we are successful if we decide to go the route of a community economic development coordinator director mm -hmm. uh, specialist whatever we got to call it um, if in my opinion, a grant would be involving the rail trail. Would that would be something we'd want to throw in the wheelhouse of our community development specialists? So, just don't want. I understand. Yeah, don't want to set up a situation where we're like that direction has to come from the board, right? Not the committee. Yes. And I think that that's why that they're still saying that they would seek authorization. Yeah, I think as long as. The language is that they have to request authorization and we have to give authorization. Um, I actually think that that situation might be beneficial where, you know, I, I hope we get the best economic development person who knows every single grant opportunity out there, but it could be that someone on a committee knows of grant opportunities that this person doesn't know of, and maybe they just need a little bit of expertise in writing the grant, and so now we're able to get our committees working with our economic development person and all parts of our town government working together in unison. So I think uh, I think this is a step in the right direction. And just end it with a period. Yeah. Want to just end it with a period? But I don't know if themselves is could weird. we could we <laughs> add after request authorization could we add a parenthetical um or make a recommendation to the board and then the rest of it doesn't really work right i would put period right after act right after what act specific actions recommendations for consideration of the select board to enhance or facilitate the positive benefits that might accrue the committee may request authorization from the board to act. Period. Period. And delete the rest of it? Yep. I mean, we're assuming that this, this is the will of the majority of the committee, which is how committees act, so. Yep. I'm okay with that. Okay, do you have a motion? I need the second part. I'm going to move that we accept this pur purpose statement with the modifications suggested, it, um, eliminating the <clears throat> themselves with commitment, specific committee volunteers. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion to a second. Any discussion? So that motion to send the, the change that Beth just suggested? Yes. Uh, and what about the, the second? You're only addressing the 
I'm pleased to wear the second the way it reads. Okay. Our other board members? Yes. Yeah. My my assumption was that your motion included. Yes. Except the whole, the whole state. state. Yeah. 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 Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Or. Let's have it. Okay. Appointment for the county LVRT committee. Hey, Beth. Yes. I apologize. Um, I would like to invite Shane on the third. If you would like to come to our meeting, that'd be awesome. Third at five o'clock. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. BJ. Uh, okay. I didn't know it was you, BJ. I joined Zoom to find out who it was and had no idea. So are we back? We're done with that topic. We yeah, want to back no, back real quick, or sure, let's do it. Okay. Uh, so Jason said that this jack is for a replacement because the old one broke uh, when the guys were changing winter summer winter tires to summer tires. Okay. Move to approve the plan of purchase based on the new information. Second, anyone? Second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I have it. Okay. Um, appointment for the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail Committee. Um, the committee, the Johnson Rail Trail Committee recommended Doug Moldy and Kyle Noose as an alternate to Doug. Um, and my understanding is that we have another interested party as well. Yes, from Aurora River. Aurora River. And to be completely transparent, the, the committee had has not heard of Aurora's interest. Um, it came in with their last meeting. Yes. Is there a sense of urgency around Aurora or from the young? Um, there is definitely a need for Johnson representation at the yeah. at the county level and the few folks who have been attending prefer not to continue. They um, there's some capacity constraints there. So we probably do need to get somebody in place relatively quickly. I don't remember when their next meeting is. Yeah, I didn't hear I what you, the last part of what you just said was um, there's some people that don't want to continue. There are people who have been attending at the county level oh, oh, okay. on behalf of Johnson that, frankly, I didn't know was happening. Um, I assume others didn't, don't know. Well, that, uh, it was a free flow. Yeah, yeah. So, could come. so now um, Johnson representation is no longer there. The We had asked, we as the board had asked the new Johnson committee to consider appointees they suggested them. Additionally, we had posted on Front Porch Forum. I think there was mistiming a little bit there. Um, so anyway, we can either choose not to appoint either, um, ask the board to consider on Wednesday when they get together, um, or we can go with the board, with the committee's, sorry, I didn't mean to say board. We can go with the Johnson Committee's recommendation of Doug and Kyle. So, uh... I am going to motion to appoint Doug Moldy to the LDRT committee, county committee, mm -hmm. uh, with Kyle Nose as an alternate, and for Brian's story to send an email to Aurora River inviting or telling her that she could attend the Johnson meetings. And if she wants to join that committee, she could make it known to their chair, and their chair could recommend her. Joining the Johnson board. It's a really long motion. Yeah. I think I understood what you said. And I'll second that. Okay. You got the gist of it, Donna, right? Yep. All right. Thanks. Any discussion? The only thing I would just suggest is that we also tell her that the county meeting is open to the public as well. Um, and thank her for and thank her for yep. her interest. Yeah. For her interest. Yeah. Um okay. In in encourage her to. Yeah, attend the rail trail meeting committee. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Ayes have it. Okay, naming of the private road off Collins Hill. So I uh, went out with uh, Justin uh, to address a few houses during his training. Uh, and we, one of the first places we went, we learned on uh, just up Collins Hill, there's uh, three houses that are being built kind of right in the road and they're going to share a common access off of Collins Hill. And the E911 regulations say that if you've got more than three addresses uh, sharing a driveway, that it shouldn't be registered as a driveway, it should be registered as a private drive. And are those relatively new houses that you kind of look very similar? Yeah. Set back up on the left. Yeah, on the left as you're heading up the hill. Um, yeah, I just saw them a couple of weeks ago. But... Yeah, this is the first time I'd seen them. Yeah. Uh, and they're, they were nearly done. When I was yeah. there. Um, but they, mm -hmm. uh, when we were addressing the houses, the builder was there and uh, had expressed an interest in naming them as Angus Rock. I have heard, go ahead. Back in, uh, on 12, 16 of 2019, this board or the select board approved a, um, well, approved language, which was submitted by the Historical Society to amend the 911 ordinance, which was not done. But they approved this language as a policy for road naming. And that policy specifically states any requests for road names, new or existing, shall be submitted to the Johnson Historical Society for review, followed by their recommendation to the Johnson Select Board, notwithstanding section two above which is the street naming piece. <clears throat> uh, all road names shall have a Johnson specific historical context and significance. JHS will submit their recommended names to the select board, the developer or persons living on a road subject to the naming may also submit proposed names to the JHS with a goal of a consensus recommendation. If aggrieved by the JSH recommendation, they shall have the option of proposing another name which shall be submitted to the JHS for review and recommendation prior to any final decision by the select board. This was adopted as a policy. It doesn't look to me like this was followed, and I think it should be. Is that in our policy book? I don't know if it is or not, but it was. It was adopted, Paul, because I haven't seen that online. It, I, I can tell you I drafted this language on behalf of the Historical Society. I, I would assume so, yeah. And I was on the Historical Society board at the time, and I attended the select board meeting where the board made the decision. My strong recommendation was that you actually amend the ordinance, because if you amend the ordinance, it becomes part of the ordinance, and it's clear. If you do it as a policy, exactly what just happened is likely to happen. And it will happen again if somebody didn't pick it up. Um, so re regardless of that, this was adopted. You can check the minutes of the meeting. It was adopted as a policy. I agree with Duncan. It's already a policy. We should follow it. We've made other people, I know from family <laughs> griping, <laughs> that we've made other people go through a lot of hoops to get an approved name. And I think it should be consistent unless we want to go through the process of amending our ordinance or policy. Uh, but in this ordinance case, amendment is a very, very long process. Yeah, and is it worth it? So I agree with Duncan, we should follow the policy. It seems a little hand time, but sure. Well, another thing that we could do, which I haven't discussed with the Starker Society Board is, we could ask this historical society board to develop a list of acceptable road names and a person who meets the requirement or the need under the ordinance for road naming could look at that list and pick a name from that I don't list. Like, no, I don't like that no. at all. Yeah, it's a tough one because, you know, if you pick a developer, right, they invest hundreds of thousands of dollars in building something that Ideally, they're going to sell for profit, maybe, or maybe they just build three houses for them and their kids to live there. 
now we're not going to allow them to name them what it they wanted to be named. Say they named it after their great grandmother that grew up in Morseville. It's not really a Johnson centric name, but it's a hundred percent of their money that went into it. And now the town's just going to say no because the historic society doesn't like it. Well, under this policy, they could submit a name to the historical society, and the historical society could evaluate it. So, under your if, scenario, if they, they could say, "Oh, you're if they you're, see fit, right? Right. Yeah. If they don't the, see fit, they don't need to." Right. The other piece, I, I agree with you up to a point. If if they ever come to the town and ask the town to take that over as a town highway then that changes the dynamic again. It certainly does. I think for the time being, our hands are tied by this being our policy. Um, I would certainly be open to providing it, but that's not what is on the agenda. So. I agree. Yeah, I, I never said don't send it to the historic society. Yeah, I so anybody it seems here very was in the room when that policy was adopted, right? I don't get this. And I mean, I yeah. was, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd, be, I'd be slow with it. It's probably the most powerful thing that the historical society has naming roads. I mean, they can be, well, you know, they can be quite a little squabble. Oh. I like the idea of them having a role in it. I don't know if I like them having veto power over it. <laughs> And I don't like them having. A well, they don't. At the end of the day, the select board gets to make the decision. They can, the historical society can make a recommendation for a name. The builder or developer can make a recommendation to the historical society. The idea, the hope is that there could be a recommendation made to the select board. But at the end of the day, if the historical society and the developer can't come to the decision, then Two names could be put forward, and the board would ultimately make the decision. Pick a third. Okay, so for the Colton Stone renaming of the private road, the naming of the private road, um, it sounds like everyone is supporting the fact that we have a policy right now. So, will the Johnson Historic Society get in touch with the developer, or is Brian going to play middleman? I, I'm going to put them in touch with each other so that I okay. can and play they'll, middleman. And they'll the make a recommendation there. by our next meeting. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. When do we need to have this in place? Are there people living there? No one's living there. They're, they're not finished yet. Yeah. They're close, but they're not finished. Plus? Uh, I just want to mention that the fact that this policy is in effect isn't posted anywhere for somebody to know about it. Yeah, and agreed. I think that that's it's really a mistake. Uh, among other things, if somebody wants to have a private road, we want to make sure they have discussions about the ramifications of a private road, especially if they want to down the road make it a public <laughs> Because people can buy their houses, and I can remember sitting in a select board meeting where there was a, a big flap up about changing to the to the other roads. And you know, you want to make sure that. There's a lot of discussion going, so I think a policy over something just like this is important. Mm -hmm. And it's not posted. I, I had posted that when I couldn't find it. Yeah, Brian took a note to put, get it posted. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. okay. Anything else on the private road? Nope. Okay. Um, development review board and racial justice chain. Uh, yeah, so at our first meeting of the new board, I um, believe that I had resigned from all of my town committees, but the meeting minutes only reflect me resigning from the planning commission. Um, so I wanted to officially offer my resignation from the racial justice uh, and social equity committee and the development review board. Okay. You're an alternate for the DRB. I am indeed. Uh, do we have a motion? I'm going to move to accept Sam's resignation. And a second. From what and what? 
to say so moved to what no i just i need to mark it in my book you want to it's race so okay. the probably justice. wants it specific too and yeah. also the development review board yes second if that was your motion yes any discussion and select board no, you're you're stepping down as green up coordinator too. Is that no? I'm staying on for this year, and you know, uh, I'll, I'll we might be able to tempt you. I'll officially relinquish the reins when we find someone else. I guess, but okay. I, I'm I'm searching for my replacement on that one. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I just have it. So now we have. Two openings on the development review board. I'm not sure how much that matters right now, but one as a regular seat and one as an alternate. Who's the regular that is vacant? Uh, well, I don't know who it is because it's uh, vacant, but I can tell you who's on it. Oh, no, if that's right. what you're interested in. Is Will Johnson who resigned? He did? Yes. Uh, did we accept his resignation? I'm, I'm not sure that the board ever officially accepted his resignation or not. I'd have to check the minutes. Hmm. Um, I think we're still missing the Brownsfield. I have not had any interest in somebody serving for the Brownsfield. Yet. Okay, I think we need to repost. Was that a front? Yeah, maybe we and talk about that. why it's important. Change the name of it to something more scintillating. And then we also have Greenfields. Yeah. <laughs> then we also have a vacancy on the racial justice that we should be posting for. Oh, we should post for that. Yeah. Actually, can you just post for everything that has vacancy listed in that spreadsheet? They're updated now. I mean, the historical society is still looking. Yeah, there's still a list one, of people. One vacancy, Lois? Yeah. Yeah, that's part of that list, Lois. Um, okay. And make sure that it goes through all the committees for us. We get there Make sure each person that puts their name in goes through the appropriate committee. Right, versus directly to us. Uh, we could actually put those people that they should reach out to directly rather than going through you. There's no point in going through you. Okay. Okay. Um, what? Up, what? Keep going. Update on the Village Garage project. So we've got a little bit of detail about uh, what the village is working on uh, for the village garage. So just a little refresher. Um, there are concerns about health and safety at the village garage, and they want to do a pretty major reconstruction project to, you know, to, to make sure everything's in order. Um, to that end, they intend to remove pretty much everything from the building apart from the uh, basic structure and then build it back up again. Uh, Exterior siding? And yep. everything? Oh. Yeah, it's going to be just a bare frame uh, before they start to rebuild, as I understand it. Um, there are different funding sources that they're pursuing, uh, one of which is the uh, congressionally directed spend spending, which was the earmark replacement, uh, and Welch is supportive of that. So that is that will probably go through uh, eventually, but that could take a considerable amount of time, and the exact amount of funding could change during budget negotiations in Washington. So they're also pursuing other funding sources. Uh, and there was a proposal to possibly seek Brownfield's funding for this. Um, in particular, they believe that if they were to apply for uh, Brownfield funding, that it would, that they would be able to not do the entire site, but they would be able to restrict it to their building. I think that's do you have anything to add, Duncan, about kind of the, the basic framework for? Yeah, 
I would I would only add I think that that there was a meeting um, with uh, uh, Ken, Eric, yourself, myself, and staff from VLCT, um, LCPC, uh, LCPC. Yeah, um, I was just looking at something that said VLCT. Um, I, I think a fundamental question for us is, in us and the trustees, is the memorandum of understanding with regard to cost responsibility, um, which, as I say, we don't have a signed copy of um, anywhere. That that bothers me a little bit that we don't have a signed copy. But in any case, that that MOU, I I think, is not. That well written. Um, in all honesty, um, it was it was brought up by Eric that under the definition section, maintenance improvement says any work done to a building that does not alter its use or result in a known reduction in value. Um, up above, the purpose statement says the purpose of the MEO is to clearly state which entity has the responsibility to maintain and improve as necessary each aforementioned building and who will pay for the associated cost of maintenance improvements. And under the statement of the agreement, it says the town and village agree that the actions required, that actions which require the demolition or substantial change in use or value of any jointly owned buildings will require the consent of both the town and village. So there's conflicting statements in it. And Eric, Eric pointed to the section, the definition section, and said, this gives us carte blanche to do whatever we want. My concern from a legal perspective is, A, does an MOU trump any ownership interests? And is one entity or the other a legal applicant for funding sources without the other party. I mean, it could just as easily be us applying for funds for something and needing the consent of the village trustees. Um, so I, I fundamentally think that's a question that needs to be answered. And I think the MOU, in all honesty, didn't really anticipate a scenario where we would, one entity or the other, would be applying for a source of funds as a separate entity. Um, so I, I think there are a number of things about this in long year that we need to clarify. I don't want to be a rope across the road, you know, for the village project, but on the other hand, I want to try and do it right. And I don't want the village to proceed along a track only to have some funding entity come back and say, well, you're only a 50% owner. You're not a proper applicant for these funds. Um, don't. That's that's the only thing I would add to that discussion is I think there's a, and the village and the town are probably both going to be applying for energy efficiency resiliency money. So it's, if it's the village applying and they need our consent, that's great. If it's us applying, we need the village consent. It's, the question is still out there, I guess. Who needs, who needs what consent? How do we do it? Does the MOU need to be modified? I don't know what the answer is. I just raised the issue. Right. It's like getting a mortgage. Yeah, it's like getting a mortgage. I I, I, I don't know the fact that you have an MOU with somebody. Negates the fact. That negates you're the owner. fact that, you're, that, that you own the property in common. Yeah. Yeah, the question for me is also about liability. It's not just about ownership. It's liability it's too. Liability. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, especially with regard to the brownfields. Now, the, the comment that was made at that meeting was they could do all of their brownfields assessment within the envelope of the building itself, and there would be no impact on anything else. But again, the town, regardless of what the MOU says, is 50% owner of the building too not just the land that it sits on. So is there liability associated with that that we would be subject to? So I, I, they all tie in together. I guess they all tie in ultimately to the question of joint ownership. 
And that's the deed is not clear, in my opinion. The MOU is not clear. The but deed is not clear. The deed just says that town and village are joint owners. It doesn't. It doesn't assign responsibility of any of the property or buildings. So the actual deed says that. Yeah. Now understand that the property was uh, there's two there's two deeds. Mm -hmm. The original 15 acres, which comprises the mill house building, the village public works garage, and the town highway department. Mm -hmm were on the original 50 acre deed. There was another deed in the 90s. I was here for that um, in the 90s from Tetro to originally the village. And the village um, agreed to allow the town to become a partner in the purchase and sales agreement. So the town and village jointly purchased an additional 185 acres, right. which includes the lower building as well. And the bulk of that hillside. And all of where the town's gravel pile and salt shed and the village stores, chips and the mountain, the hillside. So are you saying 180 plus 50? Someday I have to do an inventory of the property that we own in this town. It's it's a, that parcel is a separate 185 acres, and the build and the parcel where the buildings are is 15. 15. 15. Yeah, it's 200 acres total. Joint ownership, both. Joint ownership, both of them. And you know, maybe it's time to have a discussion about unraveling that if we can. I well, I don't know. Or merging. Or merging. Yeah, but that has not been a popular subject. Yeah. Um, which the, the MOU, yeah. Mm -hmm. The taxpayers are still so do we need to do anything in preparation going into the joint no, meeting? Yeah. Well, uh, I guess I would I would suggest even getting a tentative legal opinion as to you know whether this MOU has any legal standing from the perspective of ownership. Because you know, I think at the end of the day, that's going to be a critical question for both of us. If if we're going to apply for energy resiliency funds for our public works building, right? And so, we need the okay, of the tentative legal opinion on the MOU legality. It sounds like we also need to have a under legal understanding of, I mean, grant and other funding source, I and whether or not. Both entities would have to be applicants. How would we find that out? Is that legal or is that somebody else? Well, that would probably come out of a out of the anal the legal analysis of what the ownership means. I think it's pretty obvious that that doesn't really hold much weight legally. What well, the other thing that the MOU says. Wait, wait, wait. What does it hold? The MOU. We both entities in that meeting had said, had been asked if they wanted to seek legal opinion. Yes, on that. Said no. and we both said there's no point in paying attorneys. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> the MOU also says that either party may cancel the agreement at any time. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's That's hardly worth the paper it's written. I'd ask you, Duncan. Also, you feel really comfortable that they can narrow that brownfield down to just the footprint of the building. Well, that nation that, that's to me seems like another area that is a push. And and I will, you know, I brought that issue up at the at that meeting. Um, the folks at LCPC and maybe Seth can give us some more information mm -hmm. on that. Um, one of my concerns is the entire site is a brownfield, right? That's what. So my one of my thoughts was if we're ever if we ever do divest ourselves or subdivide the property. <laughs> Um, you know, so if the village has a piece and the town has a piece or whatever, if we were to if we were to sell a piece of that to a third party, right. um, the brownfields piece of that is still hanging out there. Um, in at this point, enough time has passed that I don't think we can devolve ourselves from cost responsibility. Um, that would be my guess too. Yeah. Maybe maybe Seth can give us some additional information on because he's pretty good on the brownfield stuff. But well, I, I think my initial thought was, why don't we do a brownfield study on the entire parcel? 
and then we would know what our exposure is, that could potentially subject us to, at, at a minimum, at that point in time, if we sold the property, we could say, here's the Brownfields assessment, these are known hazards. We have not remediated them. So I thought we've done brownfield studies before. No, there was a there was an area wide brownfield study which looked generally at repurposing some of those buildings, but it did not go into an in depth evaluation of the impact and ramification of the site for specific issues. Seth, do you want to add anything to any of this? Sure. So. Um... <clears throat> Brownfields are complicated, so I'm going to try to give you a thorough uh, overview, but also try to be succinct. Um, so for this property, um, the work that was completed uh, in the past, um, as Duncan said, was an area-wide plan, which is more uh, visioning how could this property be reused um, or be used in the future with some analysis of past use and how that might limit um, or contribute to um, adaptive reuse in the future. Uh, that's not the equivalent of a phase one assessment. Um, so a phase one assessment, which is um, at this point in time, what has been recommended uh, prior to the um, renovation of a, a village uh, garage. Um, a phase one assessment is a is essentially a paperwork review of the, the property. Um, it does include uh, interviews with the current and past users. Um, it does not, at the phase one stage, include any uh, actual testing. Um, though EPA has suggested at the same time as a phase one is done for the village who are doing a hazardous building materials assessment for the village garage. Um, what will be an outcome of the phase one um, is a phase one report, the most important, probably from your standpoint, um, you know, one of the most important pieces of that will be, would be the outline of the uh, recognized environmental considerations. Um, those are things that may be present based on past use this should be further examined uh, when the property is uh, redeveloped or renovated. Um, one of the things that's unique, atypical about um, the village garage is generally when a property owner is entering a brownfields assessment it is because they are planning on um, transferring ownership. Uh, when you do a phase one prior to transferring ownership, that opens up some um, avenues for uh, you know, funding uh, for some level of um, liability protection. Um, and when doing that, you want to do the full site because you want access to um, all the cleanup funding and all of the li liability protection that's, that's available. Um, because there's not a transfer of ownership uh, considered at the moment, um, that rationale for doing the whole site, um, at least from you know from just the standpoint of renovating the village garage, it's, 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 it's different calculations. Um, you know, doing a phase one assessment for the whole property um, is certainly an option that um, the town and the village can both. Consider um, the EPA has given uh, LCPC and the village um, permission to move forward with just a phase one for the village garage and any impacted by um, the, the um, restoration of that building, so much more limited in the whole property. Um, we're working with Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation just to confirm. Um, that, but generally EPA and DPC follow the same regulations. Um, so that's the phase one. Um, phase two would be when actual testing would occur. Um, and in the case of 
the, the village story, it's difficult to have the crystal ball of what are those rec, you know, those recs going to be. Um, but the, if the phase one is limited to you know, the footprint of the garage, the rest will be limited to the, the footprint of, of, of that of the garage. Um, cleanup funding is likely not an option um, as long as the property stays in that you know, the, the, the current hands as either the town or the village. Um, but some of the likely wrecks, and I say likely, it's not the engineer who will be doing that. So it's, you know, um, the things you would typically see at a garage property are easier to address from a worker health and safety standpoint when the building is gutted than if you were to, you know, restore the building and then find that there's contamination on the slab or an air quality concern that could be addressed um, by uh, more easily when the building's being renovated than after the fact. Um, so ultimately, um, you know, moving forward with USDA funding or most of the funding that we used other than local funding for uh, renovating the garage, those funding sources we have for a phase one at least of, of the building. Um, just in general, it's this general part of practice. Um, in terms of the property as a whole, I think that's a, a larger discussion. It's a policy discussion for the um, you know, the town and the village that be happy to provide you know feedback on. Um, but it's I think a, a really a policy decision for you folks as the um, elected body. In terms of how the application process for the phase one works. Um, LCPC is the, the grant recipient. Um, funding doesn't flow from LCPC to the property owners. Um, we contract with the um, uh, in, uh, engineering firms to do the assessment work. So I think the, the legal question for you to consider is more and, um, that narrow question of the phase one, not some of the other issues you're talking about, but is the really comes to the, the site access um, agreement because there will be a site access agreement and a participation agreement, um, at least for brownfields more so at this phase than a funding um, application because there won't be a funding application related to the brownfields phase one. Um, so I put a lot of mud in the water. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure if there's questions to clarify any of that, I'm happy to try. So for that site access agreement, it is limited to the building itself. It for the phase for yeah, phase one for the phase one. Um, due to the fact that um, the site has had a internal combustion engine um, related stuff on it, um, it is very possible might not to step into something where I'm saying something that you know or some of the same I should say but it is possible that one of those wrecks could be um the, the result of the off gassing of the so it could be outside of the footprint that could be you know Got it. or the wreck for further study you know um and so it would be a document that says that's potential mm -hmm. um and it sounds like it sounds like if I'm interpreting what you're saying correctly and following the logic behind all of it, if that is the case, then the phase two that leads into testing is even more likely to go beyond the footprint of the building itself if it's about testing. If the right, I think that it likely makes sense if a phase one is done, that list of ranks, if it likely makes sense to go before testing is done again, how that joint conversation with the town or the town and the village. Um, you know, it's <laughs> difficult to say what. So there are some things that move in air, there are some things that like move in water, and there's some things that say foot. And until the phase one is done, it's difficult to say in a definitive sense, you know, sure. what the, what those are. Um, but um I think you know, discussion about what those are when you have that list for us. It makes sense as, as, as joint order 
in the history of owners. Um, given that a discussion that we did have with EPA and with CDL, environmental engineer who would like to do the work, um, given that you're not proposing a change of use, um, the being careful, but <laughs> you know, the liability of a release is more likely to be there if that release is something that is a current threat to human health or the um, environment. And not knowing doesn't necessarily protect you from that. Um, right. Right. Understood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What you don't know. What you don't right. Well, you don't know can actually hurt you. I don't believe what they say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That was really helpful. Is there any chance? This is like really broad question, but if uh phase one, phase two assessment were done, um, and obviously they're not the village under no circumstances would get any brownfield right. remediation money. They would be seeking separate funds, like you said. Through USDA or some other vacant program. Is there any chance that because there's other buildings on that parcel, that let's say the joint building down below, would we not be able to seek those funds for a certain period of time after this is done? If there's already funds. But it prohibits. That were, yeah. Would we be prohibited from seeking the same? From like funds in near or far future because they were already received for that property, but not for those buildings. So the assessment um, funds again flow through uh, LCPC, and so there would not be an impact on eligibility for the assessment funds. Um, no, it's not those like lean up funds. Provided you've got the money. Provided you've got the money. remediation funding. Remediation funding um, <clears throat> as sort of for both the town and the village as the current owners and potential responsible parties. Um, your path to clean up funding is really, really limited. And, and I, at least through EPA and DEC, your path for cleanup is likely in terms of incorporating in a building redesign that does something else. So, for example, if the slab is contaminated and the recommended way of addressing that is doing a cap on top of the slab, if if the reuse involves something that requires capping the slab, you're more likely to get get funded that way than through ground goods cleanup. So that's a long meandering way of saying your your path to clean up funding if the town and village retain ownership is already pretty well closed. Um, if you were to say be having a conversation with um, you know a potential redeveloper of one of those buildings, um, the pathway to clean up funding would be more open and likely not impacted by this discussion about the um, about the about the relationship. Um, um yeah this is you know these the village uh municipal utility buildings are tough because there's something you need to keep your community running and they're not necessarily something you want to divest from um but just the act of the stuff you need to do to keep the community running um is also the stuff that creates that trail of of potential environmental considerations. So um, even if you're operating extremely clean site, um, you know, pH is on something that come, which are, would come from burning, you know, internal combustion engines, brake fluid just dripping one drop, you know, a day or 30 years can get to a point where there's an air quality issue. So um yeah, I, I wish I could say there's like this great clear path for all of the buildings to, you know, be, you know, cleaned up and be able to be passed on. Um, but with the, the, if there's a desire to do that in the future, the best way to do that would be to have a potential 
party be interested in redeveloping and using for a different use. Um, the good news is that the feedback from the EPA that we got was, um, you know, they want the buildings to be maintained, they want the buildings to stay in usable order, and they want them to see it in a way that's, you know, as good for health and the environment. <laughs> and so that is why we're leaving the door open for the site specific. If you as a community want to do a full site in you know, phase one, that's also something we could discuss what the scope of work might have, look like for that. Um, and that's a policy decision for you guys. If you haven't asked to do, um, I'm not going to push for you to do but if you want to talk about it, we can't talk about it. Do you think the likelihood of having to go beyond the footprint of the building is exacerbated by the fact that it has been used as the electric departments. Uh, as far as I know, transformers are not stored there anymore, but at one time they were. Um, that is... That is the, the type of thing that, you know, the, Phase one would be to address um, the present, the past presence of transformers, both by the village and by the. I understand it's possible that the Talcum will store transformers there. Um, you know, transformers are one of those things that leads to questions about um, certain certain rents. Um, so I suspect that the phase one would have questions about you know, handling and transport of uh, uh, this. Um, yeah, the, the lower building is full of them. Yeah. I mean, That's good. That gets to my concern about, you know, I'm, I'm relatively peaceful if we have a guarantee that it's going to stay right with the building. If it starts to creep outside the building and all of a sudden we've got that whole site over there, then we're going to have some then it's going to be joint ownership for sure. And I don't recall, were you here, Duncan, when we took that over from Eastern Magnesia and Talc? Because it would be interesting to know what... It was actually, uh, Gerald Tetro was in there in, in, between. in between times. Yeah. And Tetro is the one that renovated. And he did that up the spec. He's, meaning he's, I mean, those were leach fields out there. Just... You must remember them huge leach fields where the rec fields are. Where the rec so, fields are was all done under an Act 250. Um, and, and under EPA and, uh, and under EPA review so approval. Cool. So I think that's probably okay. <clears throat> still test. We do still test that area. There's monitoring wells. Okay. Uh, we've had a number of conversations, like when we're redoing the ball fields and other things, we we're going to do work out there when we did the trailhead building where we're working with state hazardous materials mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they've given us some guidance about what activities we should and shouldn't do there, but we've done everything to their guidance. Yeah. No, I'm just worried about footprint creep. Yeah. And that, I know it probably wouldn't well, matter at EPA, but that was, that, that is a separate parcel. I know it was all part of the Eastern Magnesia okay. loose net, but but you understand my concerns I do. Absolutely. about Brownfield. If Brownfield is just the building, not the drip line, not the three feet around it. Well, I mean, that's that's the potential that they would like to do. I still have a question. I mean, you talked about a, a, what were the two agreements you talked about? The, the service agreement, the site access agreement. Access. And, yeah. So can the village sign a site access agreement as the village trustees without the authority of the select board as 50% owners of that property? So I, I think that is, you know, that would, when you're crafting this question to your attorney, I think that should be part of that because I'm not a title attorney or a contract attorney. Um, and, um, in past situations, hasn't been a municipality and then another municipality. Right. When there's been property 
questions of ownership that we've always said your title attorneys and contract attorneys should be able to talk about yeah. that. So I think, I think it ultimately goes back to the question of are always going to be paying proper owners attorneys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. They're well positioned. To make well, we could certainly start with VLCT and yeah. and get a you know, they won't give us a formal legal opinion, but uh, they could probably give us a reasonable. I mean, do we really need that? We could just form LCPC that we're fifty percent owners. To my knowledge, we would be needed for an access permit, mm -hmm. right? You mean jointly sign the access permit? Could just do that. Yeah. I think that saves the town money by not paying attorneys. I think we're gonna get I think we're gonna have to figure this question out sometime. Certainly. It's a but yeah, I think if the village were if the village were agreeable to having the town be a co applicant or a co signer or whatever. For those, I I suspect that's one avenue or approach that could be taken. I would think that they want the town to be a co-applicant, co-signer, because if they if they went well, for funding through the USDA, which you United States Department of Agriculture is giving grants for remediation on municipal buildings, it's unique, right? Yeah. Um, but it, it, you look at Mark. Um, I don't know. I'd like to look at Mark. What I can tell you the feedback that so, we got when we had um, that discussion was this was held up and they said, well, we don't, we don't need your if, approval. If the village goes through the whole process of applying and for some stroke of luck, the government actually does its job before doling money out, they should say you're not a full owner. You can't apply for this solely. So we need to change our agenda or potentially change the agenda to the conversation being about the MLU and separately about, would you like the town to sign these documents with you? Uh, Cause I think we need to add that as a specific actionable item from our joint, to our joint meeting agenda. If you could add that to the list okay. and run it by Eric. Yeah. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll need the same thing. We apply for the you yes, we owe them every courtesy yeah. for sure. Um agree. So do we want to have DLCT do an informal review of the MOU? That's um I'm gonna weigh provide a little opinion on that. I believe the LCT doesn't like to give recommendations on things that it I know. should be should go to your town attorney, and I think right. a dispute between two municipalities that are both VLCT members. Brian's right. I think we're very unlikely to get a satisfactory answer. From VLCT. Yeah, fair enough. He's right. Do we need one if we're just going to offer to sign the documents anyway? Probably not. Yeah, and if if we do that, I just want everybody to be aware of the fact that there could be ongoing liability issues that were much like the MOU agreement, where we didn't anticipate the possibility of this happening. But now, I'm going to pose this question very weirdly to you, Seth. Mm -hmm. um, both the village voters and the town voters have voted a couple of times to continue discussions about a merger. And if a merger were to happen, anybody could correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe both entities would cease at that point, and then there would be a new one. I believe they would call it the town of Johnson because the Senate would appoint a name, but it would have a new EIN number, right? Or federal ID number. I believe my understanding Possibly. is the same. My understanding is that it does create so new that's, entities. That's yeah. a super weird background, but if that's what happens, then any property it could go a million different ways between now and then. But any property that the town and the village own would actually be deeded or sold for a dollar, however it would work, to a new entity. So if we had this brownfield study done on the whole parcel before that was done, could we? 
uh, could the new entity access brownfield remediation funds based on the old two? <laughs> I thought you're way over. We would like an answer now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I well, he he kept you kept saying it's a lot easier in transfer of ownership to access brownfield remediation funds, essentially, right? And I'm just a big balloon out there. If there is a transfer to a new entity, that be Would good to have the study done ahead of time, so we could access remediation money, or new new entity could not we. Let him answer. Yeah, I, stop. I, 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 I like to um, you know there may be precedent to help answer that question with the you recent. Know, um, change the village of Essex Junction to the city of Essex Junction and then we change the entity. Um, um, my gut is that <clears throat> DEC and EPA would want to look at it as, as the same entity. Um, but it's clever enough that if it happens, I'll ask the question for you. Um, it, yeah, what, what does re, uh, 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 responsible or a past user who may be a responsible party kind of reconstituting themselves? Um, it's, it's nuanced enough that it's probably a question worth asking if you want it to be asked. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Lindenville Town and Linden Town, I mean, Lindenville yeah. Village and Linden Town have recently merged. Uh, merged. Mm -hmm. We're in the process of merging. Um, so there's another possible. Yeah. Hardwick did it a while ago. Hardwick did yeah. it a while ago. Yeah. Waterbury did Waterbury, it yeah. recently. Waterbury did it very uniquely. They did. Yeah. They like did. But, still, but still, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's, it's worth researching. Um, it, I don't want to get, get your hopes up too much. Can you just get back to us? We won't hold you. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll, just, yeah that I, would I be lovely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, cool. Okay. Next item. Yeah, yeah we're ready. Okay. Next so, item so. is the energy efficiency grant opportunity. So don't go anywhere yet. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. There's a flyer in your pocket that is different from what I brought for you, and I'm happy to do that if you can see it. You brought colored copies? Mm -hmm. The town of Johnson can't afford it. That's okay. Barnes has a 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 Oh no, uh, I saw this because I don't know how much else you think you're bored. LCPC. LCPC. Uh, Do you own Brian? Probably getting a look in charge. Ask somebody's LIA sentence, maybe? Oh, no, I That's oh, yours. That's okay. yours. Tell me it's, it's warm in here, but we can't afford AC. Well, we open the window. <laughs> They're not operable. Okay. Are they not? Operable? They are operable. We can open them. <laughs> you can't. You can't jump out, though, Mark. Victoria, you can just talk oh, over them. All right, Victoria. Speak up. We're loud talk, people. Why don't you start talking? Yeah, I'm new to LCPC. I just wanted to introduce myself. Actually, it's Nick Myers. I'm new. Victoria. And does she need to speak into the mic? Or you're you Tori. Gonna... Okay, noted. Uh, you don't need to speak into the mic, but if you could be near the mic oh, when okay. you're speaking, that would probably help. Because there are people. Okay. Zoom. Yeah. It's better. So I'm here to present about this new like grant program through the department of building. Oh, no, I'm still Hey, wait a second. We are being very rude. I just going to call us out. Let's listen to Tori, please. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Tori. Okay. Yeah. Municipal Energy Advancement Program for the Department of Buildings and General Services. It's a new program for working municipalities to help improve the energy efficiency of their municipally owned buildings. And there's a I give you a brief overview and then ask me any questions or questions. The first opportunity through the program is 
um, the community capacity building many grants. It's four thousand dollars to do community engagement outreach or any capacity building exercises involved in improving the energy resilience of the town. And the second opportunity kind of comes in three parts. It's doing a free energy assessment of the building and then based on that assessment you're eligible to apply for up to half a million dollars to engage in the improvements that are outlined in the assessment done by just hired contractors so it's free there's no cost to town and the uh, half a million is a no match required uh, and from what i gather you have the contractors in hand basically yes yeah, yeah. there's four what um, Group they hired them so we don't have to wait for eight years to get them. So. Yeah, so they're and they're hoping for eight years. Um, well, they're hoping to complete all the assessments by January. The assessment applications are going to be open uh, this spring, which is going to be coming up soon. Um, so if you are interested in uh, putting your application in for an assessment of any of the these you know, buildings, um, you I saw on your agenda is also prioritizing what you want to have access. Um, but there's also money in this program for the RPCs to provide any grant application technical assistance, uh, which is something that we typically do for all the funds in the county. That's great. So I don't see a downside to this, is there? Um, what is the, the downside? I, there isn't really a downside to the program, but there is a little bit of a wrinkle uh, with. The village is likely also going up for this program as part of the village garage. Um, and the program is half a million dollars per municipality. There could be a reason if we are co-applicants on that with the village that uh, we may not be able to each independently access $500,000 if we're joint applicants on anything. Well, they should limit to a quarter of a million and us a quarter of a million, or 250,000. To the best of my understanding, it's not really an answered question about how they would. No, it's based on that assessment. And so if we each apply to have buildings assessed separately, that would leave that opportunity open to people who apply separately for that up to half a million. And what is it even more? Well, that's the assessment side of it. Right. Right, but to the point of the application, yeah, of the funds, you're doing good. I was being sarcastic. Yeah, yes. well, I'm just checking my. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm looking yeah. at it. But, um, it is a really great opportunity. Um, the back of the flyer was just online. So this, this program was funded through ARPA funding, so it's great. Um, yeah, how it's no mass in it plays well with funding. Program you might pursue. Yes, those dates were very familiar. Yeah. <laughs> um, so does that include things like would it include in theory things like um introducing you no know, HVAC systems and obviously like insulation and things like that, but it does include bigger efforts like HVAC? Yep. Um making improvements to the overall thermal envelope. Um, HVAC, you know, air quality improvements and fuel switching for heating systems for mm -hmm. big target areas. They're helping fund. Would it do things like solar energy? Uh, mm -hmm. Not sure. That's okay. Yeah, okay. Before, to expand on Beth's question, if we put in a series of electric heat pump units in this building or the village garage and combine that with a series of solar panels on the roof, <clears throat> which would supplement the electricity needs of the program. Is that the kind of thing that might qualify? Well, it all depends on the assessment that the contractor gives you. Um, the funding is going to be provided to implement what the assessment says. And so they're likely to recommend heat pumps. Um, I'm not sure what they say about solar, but generally, like energy generation is not energy covered. But it might be a good use of some ARPA money to, put, to do our own solar. 
So this is efficiency, not generation, pretty much. Right. But you know, we could choose our own. It's interesting. It's called it energy it. resilience, though. <sighs> not efficiency. I don't know what to tell you. It does say renewable energy. Are you really gonna turn down free government money because of how they need No, I'm not gonna turn it down. I'm just more of it. Surprise the US GAs. No, I'm not turn more of it. We're gonna expand it. Yeah. Um that like might be a question when we decide what we want to do with one of the buildings, but I, I personally am interested in the program. Uh, I think the board as a whole needs to make a decision on the buildings that the town owns independently, and then there'll have to be a decision uh, with the town and the village on how they want to do jointly owned buildings. <laughs> what do we own independently? I know, I was just uh, gonna say uh, that. The like historic society yeah. building. The what? Yeah, the historic historic society. society. Yeah. And the library. Yeah. Well, I'm still, um, the, the pavilion out in the middle of the field is yeah. really inefficient. It, it um, sure is. Wait, what? What did you ask? He wants the fire department building. Village does. So totally the village. Yep. Okay. They own it. Um, but this is good information, and I think we're talking about this at our joint meeting next week. So maybe we could, like, you could deal with Brian and Eric from the village, maybe on when the decision is made. Do you have any idea yet assessments? when the applications are going to open up for this? Um, they said a couple weeks ago, which now they're saying maybe this week or next. Um, Perfect. It'll be the week after we meet. <laughs> Does it make it? I mean, we can't, we can't submit a request now that's going to get us um, any further along the line. Um, no, it's just a matter of getting all the, your documents in order for the buildings that you want to assess. Yeah. Because um, there's two kinds of assessments. There's a level one, which is like a typical walkthrough, there's a level two, which is more intensive and, uh, investment grade audit. Um, and that level two also makes you eligible for a volume loan fund. Um, there's a small loan opportunity for the program as well. So they're both free assessments. Is there a reason we would pick level one over level two? Um, if you just wanted it to be super easy and not have to get too much information together. Oh, I see. It's the work. What are we doing? The level two could also be useful information for future opportunities. And if, if we were to make this decision uh, well, a few months before we could have a level two assessment? Um, before the assessment actually happens? Yeah. Probably. But the application for it is going to be released. Yeah. Are they going to do those on a first come, first serve basis, the, the application okay. process? But they're saying that every municipality should be able to get at least one. Um, and they're prioritizing them based on energy burden from the 2019 um, Efficiency Vermont Energy Burden Report. And Johnson is the highest ranked energy burden <laughs> in our county. Uh, in our county, yeah. Yeah. why is that Johnson Johnson civilians or Johnson government? Um, it's Johnson residential units, but they're basing it off like they're summarizing municipalities whole based on their residents. Oh, perfect. There you go. That's handy. What do we know? Well, it's yeah, good right? to be first at something. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> We don't have a lot of old buildings, so therefore, it's your favorite for this app. It does. It does. Okay. Okay. Excellent. And sorry, just one last question for the community, for me anyway, from the community capacity grants. Like, I see it talks about hosting and having promotional materials, but like, what does that mean to our community? Tangibly, tangibly, what does it mean to our residents? Um, if they were curious, um, learning how they could save on fuel costs in their own home. You could host an expert to talk about weatherizing, um, you know, including window inserts in, um, insulated building better or other energy zone topics. So it's not about that. It's not putting them in a position to yeah. um, get somebody to come to their homes. It's more about educational opportunity. Okay. Access to information like efficiency yeah. remote. Right. And some towns are also using it to build capacity within the municipality, so you'd also be eligible to apply to hire consultants to help you with um, 
certain topics, like um, ADA assessment for helping you manage invoices and um, other project management. And this isn't just about residents, right? This could be for businesses. Like we could, for example, here's what I'm thinking. That was my whole thought. We could, in theory, host a educational whatever for our businesses in town um, and couple that with our educational, not, not this person's, whoever we bring in, but couple that with our um, revolving loan fund discussions like you know here's some educational information and if you need money to make your building more efficient for your business yeah. you know, yeah. we have a revolving yeah. loan fund it's a great people, idea. people use them to put upgraded windows right? yeah the revolving loan fund yeah. well except that our revolving loan fund is does not lend itself nicely to those kinds of the villages. Village has village, a separate yeah, the uh, village uh, uh, which they can use for home improvements and business improvements. Are the towns the Bobby Long Front has a lot more bells and whistles associated, a lot more strings. restrictions yeah. related to it, unfortunately. Okay. No, I'm right then. Okay. But loan business loans are still very doable with our fund. Oh. Uh, so could we hire a consultant to work with an energy committee to develop a outreach program? Could that be the purpose of hiring a consultant? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Howard's always said he wants an energy committee. <laughs> well, if Howard wants an energy committee, then what are we reading? Well, he's uh, our, he's our guy, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Are there any more questions for Tori? Do you yes. have any questions for Tori? She's answered my questions, so I think she's done a great job. I agree. But if we're all happy, we do have a packed meeting. And I'm not trying to put you away. I'm just. My contact information is there too. So. Just because Evan doesn't have any more questions. So he wants right. to be long now. Right. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Tori. Thank this you. Really Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Inspiring. Um, and related, our next topic is some lighting primary locations for the assessments for this program. Mm -hmm. um, from what I understand, the village is likely to only go up for one. They might go up for a second one. Um, you know, they said they might. They're definitely going up to the village garage. They might go out for the uh, sewer plan, if I remember the discussion correctly. But that leaves us a pretty good window of being able to pick, you know, between one and three uh, <clears throat> projects of our own and likely being able to get them done pretty quickly because somebody can come out and do all of Johnson in a day. In terms of the assessments? Yeah. Um, okay. Well, we just pulled the trigger on the library for $22,000 worth of insulating, right? I uh, yeah. And the library has been eligible for quite a few library specific. Yeah, they, they were going after a grant, that larger grant, remember? Right. Jasmine was talking about it yeah. through the Vermont Board of Libraries, I, I believe. And I wouldn't want to coincide or step on their toes. Try to go after something they're already going after. But they also, in their window replacement, like I felt like their window replacement kind of fell through a bit. But unless they end up getting that bigger package. If they get the bigger package, then they have what they need. And, and if they, they don't, don't, their windows are delayed for a year, or maybe there's more money in this other account than they want to allocate that. I don't know. Well, it also sounds like they're past. The stage of needing an assessment. It, it sounds like they've already kind of identified the areas, at least that they. But the thing is, if we did, we don't open up this funding without the assessment recommendation of the assessment. I'm, I'm just saying, maybe we prioritize another building than one that there's already a plan. It seems, it seems like they're at least a little bit further along in the process than. No, I don't know if they've actually had an, an official 
No, they Especially. they tried to deal with efficiency Vermont, and it was, from what I heard, not overly fun. Not a super friendly experience. Yeah. Um, Do you have to know, Victoria, whether or not these assessments would assist with the library offer grants for energy efficiency improvements? It, um, it can be used, it can be used as up in my other funding programs. Um, so the library was assessed under this program. Um, that would, it would be eligible for that funding and it would be added to for our funding sources that we see. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking along the lines of the, the library is looking into separate ARPA grants specifically for libraries. Um, and part of that is energy efficiency improvements, weatherization, et cetera. And I don't remember whether there was a specific requirement in that grant program for an energy assessment. And we could potentially split this $500,000 up between multiple buildings, right? As long as they're all assessed. Okay. So my why is there why is the range one to three buildings why three? Just seems like a seems like we're diluting the money if we're as the more buildings we assess, but there is no hard limit on right. Okay, I mean the reason I ask that is because I would actually like to have information on all of our buildings if we had the capacity. To get an assessment on all of our buildings and then rank those buildings Just based like on our need. I don't care. Level one or two, frankly. What if you get a level one, can you then go for a level two? Uh, it's my understanding at this point that you'll get one type of assessment per building. Okay. And that level one would be sufficient enough in identifying the areas to allow for the recommendations, right? Like that level one is gonna result in a list of things that you can do that are significant to change. Yeah, okay. So and it would make you eligible for the implementation unit, but the level two makes you eligible for right. additional right. sources of fire. Right. I see. Right. So I think we should have another meeting now. For part of the next well, meeting. Yeah. But where my head was going, because I don't want to step on committee's toes or the village's toes, but it seems to me like an assessment is no cost to either entity or committee or board, and it gets us information on buildings. So I would like an assessment on the library and the historic society, but I don't know if I'd want to pull the trigger on funding, you know, submitting them for implementation grants without talking with them. Well, the thing is that our HVAC is not great here. Well, I don't understand why it's so oh, problematic. I wasn't finished yet. I also right. wanted yeah. to submit or submit or assess whatever, however you want to discuss it, the town garage and this building. But we can't submit for implementation grants without talking to the village first. But we could get them assessed. Yeah. Have yeah. The information. Like the library specifically, you know, they're doing the spray foam, but if Windows would get a high score or whatever and say it costs twenty thousand dollars to replace their basement windows that they want to do for years. Yes, that does dilute funds, but and, and maybe they could use a heat pump. I know that the garage could use an electric an electric water heater. They're gonna want to put a heat pump one in because they score high. There's a scoring system. Um well it's not just hot water, right? It's heat too. But no, it's, it's decoupling system. the boiler from the hot water system. Yeah. Is, yeah. is the big savings right there. And they need a replacement of the boiler. We do need a new boiler. Yes. I don't know. They probably won't give any money for fuel oil boilers. I got I got an energy efficiency grant for my house for a fuel oil boiler that was energy efficient. Really? It's possible. 
and they decoupled it from my hot water also. So now I have a electric backup, which is great when I run out of oil. Maybe that's why you got much fuel. So, but the, no, I got it for the pump, for the um, pump on the boiler, the, what's it called? Right. I think I had to replace it over and over again because it didn't work. Historic society, I think, could use some insulation and probably a new boiler and pumps, and they probably need to be premium efficiency pumps. And there's work that needs to be done here on HVAC. Just yeah. diluting money, but we need permission yeah. from 35 different people. Yes. Yeah. And does the Conservation Commission have any wants? Mm -hmm. So the thing is that of any building on board? Well, I don't know how to We did have an assessment a few years back. But yeah, so, it would need to be this assessment done by these contractors to access right. these funds. And that's on the street. I just don't want to have people think that we appreciate how long it would have done. Just never get the work done. Anybody in disagreement? I just, I, I want to focus on the buildings where we have the biggest energy usage. And I think the town garage is probably number one. Oh, and, and the cold storage. And this is number two. The historical society doesn't actually use that much fuel. It'd be great. And we know it leaks like a sieve, or at least when I work through. But where we're burning fuel is at the garage here. Garages. Garages, yeah. That's where, that's where we're, I mean, those buildings. And one of the things I talked about, which I think makes a lot of sense, fuel. but... We don't have time to do it given the given the fact that it's ARPA money and gonna be spent. I think it makes a lot of sense to look at a district wide heating facility for all of the buildings over there. The, the village, public works building, our building, the millhouse building, lower building. If we had one chip plant, um, you know, that could be the boiler for all of those. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, it might it might be a larger amount of money that we have available, but it's unfortunately no. I don't think we have time to think that globally. I don't think there's enough but if money. We, if we have a level two, there isn't there, enough money. Not nearly enough. Money. No, there's not enough money. But if we had the time, if we had the luxury of time, and we could yeah. demonstrate a cost savings over years, I'd be willing to go to the voters for a bond. Not to find something like that. Yeah. Um, to I, I, Mark's point, I feel like we should put a pin in this and think about, like we all have different opinions. And I think that leaving here, probably knowing a few of you, a few of you will do more research on all of this. I might too, it depends on how much time I have. Um, well. So I feel like we should pick this up again in next meeting. So, so is there anything we need to decide tonight? Well, I don't see the harm in selecting locations for assessments because I essentially selected every building that we own yeah, or own that has insulation in it, right? I'm not, what, what I'm not again? Library? Library, Historic Society, here, two garages. I didn't select a mill house. Assessment on the mill house would be, I guess, get a leaf blower and watch the air blow through the walls. <laughs> For the mill house. Put a pin in. Let's do it again. Does that have its own oil tank? Yes. I don't remember seeing the mill house separated in any of our reports. Is it? It is. Yeah. There's an oil tank in the basement. Uh, really. But it's called out in our reports that we've seen. Our financial reports, we can pull oh, Millhouse know. out. Because when Mark talks about garages having all this oil, I don't believe that it's just the garage or a garage. Like maybe it is the Millhouse. And the garage. Yeah, and it's just being yeah, called garage. Yeah, it's the garage. garage. And it's actually the Millhouse that's spending all the money. I just remember the number that those men quoted in that. Well, that's my point. I don't know that we can use those numbers to assess what the biggest energy suck is. I'm good, thanks. Let's get a chin and tonic. Right? Unless we do level one for all of our buildings. <clears throat> I could get behind that. Okay, me too. 
The other thing that I want to point out, I guess two things. One, just a reminder that the assessment is not, we won't be able to ask them to assess us for a specific thing. So you use the example of the district heat, but we, we talked around some other things about like what we think buildings need. We won't be able to direct the assessment to say, we want you to assess this so that we can do X or Y. It's just, we want you to assess this building and then they're gonna come back with recommendations. Uh, the other point is, and Corey, correct me if I'm wrong, there is not a guarantee that they will do every building we ask for an assessment for. Yeah. Um, that's kind of where that one to three recommendation comes in is that more than three buildings, my impression is that we're not likely to actually get assessments on more than three buildings. But we're, we're the worst town in Lamont County. So, and <laughs> is that true? <laughs> um, they're saying at least one. So it's. Uh, uh, guarantee that you will get a whole, just why you want to prioritize to be above the map, you know, pretty yeah. high done, but you can like, do one, two, three, this is the order I want to do. I guess we got to pen until next meeting. <laughs> that changes everything. Yeah, it does. Okay. So homework assignment? For, yeah. Homework assignment. Yeah. For Shane. All of us, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Rosemary, back in. Um, I don't remember offhand, but she, 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 it's a short trip. I think she's back next week. I, she said she's out all of this week. She's definitely out all of this week, and she's returning next week. And I, I think you're right, Beth. I think it's early in the week, like Monday or Tuesday. Beautiful. Tori, thank you. Seth, thank you. You're welcome to Thanks, stay. Paul. We'll be here for a while. <laughs> but you know. It's really riveting stuff we're getting into. <laughs> yeah. How about you need for the scripture bridge or you? It um, wouldn't hurt. Yeah, the, there might be questions, uh, so that could be helpful. Let's do Scribner Bridge right now. We'll move okay. it up. So Scribner Bridge study. So uh LCPC, we uh contracted with them to uh, do the uh, some of the management for the Scribner Bridge okay. Engineering Study. Um, the and LCPC has asked for at least one select board member or or town official to come uh, when they do the opening of the proposals and first round assessment. Okay. okay, a town employee or select board member. And when will that be? They're open to discussing dates. Uh -uh. Okay. Uh, well, are, are they, or is there a date set? There is not been a date set. Okay. So it, we, we would coordinate with whoever. Okay. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. A select board member would be great to have. It would likely be a daytime. Or... It would definitely, yeah. yeah. It should say it would definitely be a daytime. You're going to do it? You just raised your hand? Do yeah, I raised my hand, but Dr. Uh, wants to do it. All right, so uh, motion to authorize Mark to be president for LCPC at opening Scribner Bridge. Are you, are you likely you to, want to, to do it? I, you just volunteered. I just volunteered. Yeah. Yeah. I will coordinate with them, do it when I can do it. But he pointed at Duncan, so that's why I wanted to get clarified. And Duncan can be the alternate. Oh, so sure. We can have okay. the old retired guys that don't have anything to do. Right. Okay. <laughs> so nothing to go nothing down better down. to do. You're not uh, tired though. You're 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 in the in the working okay. class. My balls in work, but that's okay. Okay, so we have a motion. Do you have a second? Second. All right, second. Cool. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank well, you. Thanks for staying, Seth. Thank you. And it's more than a, Seth. That's not more than an hour, is it? Yeah, five or six hours. Will will he get the uh, the uh, proposals in advance of the meeting? Or... Yes. Oh no, you got to open them. We're gonna open them there. there. Well, you'll you'll open them and then do them. I mean, the review could take more than an hour, but you don't won't have to be like physically present. But they're going to be apples to apples to apples as far as we know. That's the intent of the RFP. Yeah. Is yeah. That... 
using comparables, but they won't be. Is there going to be anybody? Is there a ranking and a scoring and sheet? Will, uh, yes, that will prepare a scoring sheet. So, Duncan, you're going to come with me. What? You're, All right. Uh, you're going to come with me. We're on to the next topic. I can if you want, but it's totally a deal. Mark, next topic. Okay, EMS. Uh, NEM, sorry, NEMS. All right. Thank you, Seth. Oh, contract review and signing. I did. I mean, this we were provided, and it's the same number. So, I motion to authorize the chair to sign the NEMS contract on behalf of the select board. Do we have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All no. those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I just have it. Do we need a copy with other town signatures or can I just sign this copy? I don't have a copy with other, other town signatures, so what they usually, that we could be the first one signed. What they usually do is send, a, we could ask them to send one completed sheet. I'm just going to we'll send this out and then if they want uh, me to update another one, I will Beautiful. leave it to them. If they haven't provided us with. Okay. Can we go on to the next item, Beth? Yep. Next item is the uh, sheriff's patrol contract. Uh, <laughs> so the sheriff's contract is up end of June. Um, the last I talked to Linda Martin of Wolcott Select Board. She said to me, we really have to do that sheriff's contract. And I said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> we do. Uh, that was the net result of that. That was good that. <laughs> oh, you know, with Linda, she could have already done it. <laughs> she could have, but I don't think so. I think she would have sent it. Because um, yeah. this was <laughs> lots of quality time on sheriff's department contract stuff over the past year. Um, so I think Susan's the chair for Hyde Park again. Brian is not, from what I understand. Susan That's Barclay. correct. Yeah. Um, I also think that there does need to be a real true revision of the full contract. I don't really have the mental capacity for that at the moment. And I suspect Linda doesn't either, or I would have heard something from her. Um, so I guess what I'll do is reach out and just see if anyone wants to have conversations, um, but we may end up picking up the old contract with minor revisions, but I do think we need a full rewrite. Oh, there's a sign. Have you had any further conversations with Roger about the really tentative discussions about establishing a regional police force versus the sheriff? Nope. He he initiated conversation at Eric's going away party. Um and I haven't heard from him since. But he was definitely interested at the time. It's interesting to me that I haven't heard from him, so no. Mm -hmm. Um I do think probably shouldn't say this publicly, but I will. I do think that he has a retirement plan of a year or two. I don't think it's long. Uh, and I just say that it's me speculating for a few different reasons, but um, pretty sure that's true. That'll be very interesting. That's an elected position, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think that they're positioning Scott Kirkpatrick to run. I like Scott. It's nice guy. But, um, but anyway, so don't know where that lies at the moment. I haven't heard that he's talked to any county um, agency about it. The most I've heard him talk, talk about is, I'm sure he's talked to Susan about it. I'd be shocked if that wasn't the case. And I believe he probably talked to Linda about it at Eric's party also, because she was there and um, you know, he found me to talk about it, so I assume he found her too. Is Linda, Linda still working at Pike Park Networks? I think she isn't 
any more? I think that was a temporary. Yeah, so I don't think so. I just didn't know how long. Yeah, I think the clerk is back. Yeah. So sure. I believe so too. I think she told me she's not. Anyway, um, so if there are any suggestions on the contract, I'll make sure we get a copy. Can you add that to the list to get the copy out yeah. of that and the I would um if we're pushing matters. I would really like to see for communications uh, too. Something in there about enforcing the ATV ordinance because they enforce ordinances, but they don't enforce that one. And in the past, uh, GM ATV, which is Green Mountain ATV Club, not Green Mountain Access Television, yep. uh, has offered to uh, provide some funds. I can't remember how much, but they were willing to pony up to patrol, to pay for patrol for themselves, and they're having difficulty finding people to do it. I think they got the game wardens to do it yeah, a little bit, but the taxpayers pay a lot for patrol. And even if it was just written that they would patrol for four weekends a year or something, mm -hmm. given GMA TVs, yeah. and I think VASA maybe is willing to put money in uh, too as well. Yeah, but it's cool. another service. That we could provide the taxpayers that's been asked for. Yep, I think that's a good ad, uh, and I'll do my best. And I'll also just talk to um, Chris Watson, Watson, yeah. and um, Scott Kirkpatrick also about this because in a meeting that I went to at the sheriff's department last summer, maybe um, I brought it up, and they were both receptive to thinking out of the box on what it means to patrol for ATVs and help with um, enforcing ordinances. Um, it wasn't quite as like, they did not have the same level of, con of concern as um, Roger did about it. And they thought that there were probably ways that they could make themselves seen in frequently traveled ATV areas. So that was good to hear. Even yeah. if they would be flexible enough to follow up with, I mean, everybody videos the ATVs. Mm -hmm. if, I should, if I call up Watson and say, listen, there's the license plate, there's the video, there's this person yep. illegally running down the road. Would you, nowadays they're like, nope. But yeah, if there's enough to prove, I, I don't know of a case where they didn't follow up. But if you're only honed in on a license plate and you say they were on this road, that doesn't necessarily mean that's where they were. Right. No, you'd have um you'd have there, to have there are people that live on Railroad Street that are videotaping them going down Railroad Street and playing yep. Fresh Hill. So either way, I think that adding adding that to the patrol contract is a good add. And yeah, yeah I agree. That, that's a great idea. Okay. If there is anything else, just let me know and I'll throw it out there. I think what I think I'll end up pushing the contract out to the other towns and if you guys are okay with me doing this, yeah. Just saying we want to add something about ATV um ordinance enforcement. Beautiful. And see what the other towns say. I would love to I, I understand that you don't have the necessary horsepower um to take on another task, but if if Susan or Linda did and they were to have a discussion about the regional policing. I I think that's certainly something that we should consider. Yeah. As an alternative to a contract with LCP. I mean, the yeah, LC, LC. LC. LSCD. LC. LCS. Did Too many acronyms today. Out. You just see came saying letters and eventually you'll hit the right yeah. one. How Cambridge consist now? Yeah. They have a it's contract with the state, state. police for 40 hours right. a week. And I would think Roger would want to be recruit, recruit Cambridge to be part of that. He's he's trying he tries recruiting towns. Uh, you towns. know, they're paying uh Fraction. not a lot of money for 40 hours a week, and it's Apparently, their citizens are satisfied. Um, okay, moving on. Um, 
VEC stormwater permit RFD, RFP date. What, what, what? The new agenda item is not on it. So we Dad. already covered the communications contract discussion too. Oh. On one of the things. Yeah, is there okay. anything else you have to add no. to that? Oh. As far as I know, there's no issue or complaints about the communications contract. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, there were some legislative changes being talked about with regard to primary, secondary, piece apps and all that stuff. I don't know if any of that went anywhere, <laughs> but I'm sure that that would be part of Rogers' proposed contract. They cover a lot of towns. <clears throat> the the sheriff's department yeah. communications and they just recently added I want to say they added Stowe, but Stowe's probably wrong. They added somebody else just recently to their list. Like their list just keeps growing of communities they serve for communications. But it doesn't seem to be problematic for us in any way. I've not heard any complaints about communications. Yeah, I think they're doing a good job. Um, Okay, cool. Um, so the stormwater permit RFP date. Yep. Uh, I would like to delay, or I would like to redate the due date for that from the 12th to uh, June 16th, which would be just before your second meeting in June. Uh, that'll give the respondents what they feel is enough time to submit a response. That would be the time that they have to have. That'd be the deadline for filing yes. a proposal. Yeah. When did we push it out? 34 days. No, when did we push the RFP out to everybody? Like when did we ask for a response? When did we, we submit to them? Yeah. We had asked for responses to be due on May 12th. Um, it's gone out to a couple, it hasn't been widely circulated yet uh, because the immediate feedback I got was this was not enough time. But... Well, I just want to understand for my benefit when did we push it out to the people who have responded? We pushed it out. Uh, when did we approve it? I think we approved it on the 17th. So we pushed out that week. At our last board meeting? Yeah. Okay. So when did it actually go out for probably by the end of that week? Yeah, by the end of that week, I circulated it among you know what our likely responders were, and I immediately heard back. We need more time than this. Second. One, two, three. So basically three week three weeks wasn't enough, essentially yeah. what you're saying. And is that going to be posted on like Works in Progress or some other yep. online entity where they've got to publish? Yes. Okay. I'm good with it. What else? Do you yep. need a form of motion or is, is it just good to? I don't think, I mean, I'm comfortable with just direction from the board. But Did our last motion. motion include a date? So. Your last motion was just the RFP. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, town administrator combined with or without economic development. Duncan, do you want to lead us on this one? Uh, yeah, I, I think I sent out to everybody a couple spreadsheets that just tried to look at the Potential financial impact of one versus the other. Um, later on in the discussion, we can have another discussion about interim services. But, um, you know, basically, I think my conclusion was that we could probably afford. Uh, the services of separate positions, um, but it, but it's it, not it, It's not in the package. No, I didn't get a copy of it. Oh, I thought it sounded to me. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, 
I sent it to everybody individually, right? So you hopefully you got it on your in your email accounts. But the long and short of it is, um, what I did was prepared three different spreadsheets, one for a twenty-four hour a week community economic development specialist, uh, and I did four different salary ranges: forty dollars an hour, thirty-five dollars an hour, thirty dollars and twenty-five dollars an hour. At the $40 rate, the total town costs uh, comes up to $79,000. And if you, and I, I, I don't know if this is the right way to think about it or not, but we got voter approval for 50,000 and we carry 40,000 in our budget for the current year, anticipating that we would spend that 40,000 within the current year's budget. I doubt that we're gonna do that. So that 40,000 is probably gonna turn into surplus rather than current year funds. So I, I essentially used $90,000 available to fund a position. So at, at, 40, at 40 bucks an hour, uh, yeah, 40 bucks an hour at 24 hours a week, it comes out to a total town cost of 79196 which includes Vermont Minister of Retirement, includes a little bit for um, workers' comp, uh, unemployment, long-term disability. It includes the FICA costs, and it includes a prorated share of health and dental. Um, so the, you know, the base salary that an employee would receive after their employee deductions would be 38, 38,000. Be 38,000 or 38 dollars? 38,618. Okay. So in other words, they their employee costs out of a total salary at a base rate of $40 an hour times 12, 48, it'd be 49,920. They would have okay. payroll deductions of eleven thousand three hundred one to meet their employee uh, contributions for health, dental, and retirement, which would leave them a net of thirty eight thousand six eighteen in their pocket, basically. But then you would take federal and state income tax. That does not include their federal or state tax liabilities. Okay. That would have to be additionally taken out. Yeah. Um. So that's, you know, that's essentially out of the 79,000 at 40 bucks an hour, that leaves a, a delta to the budget of $10,800, basically. And that's the, that's the highest rate of pay that I calculated was the 40 bucks an hour. Um, we can, you know, this spreadsheet, you can plug in 45 or 50 or whatever you want in there. Um, those are the figures I use. For the town administrator, Alone, I calculated it based on uh, 32 hour a week. I took the current salary um, for Brian, in which is in the budget, um, and that's roughly 81,460 bucks, something like that. And, but that's based on 40 hours a week. So I did, I did the money available in our budget based on that current salary um, and a two-person health and a two-person dental. Is that, that's correct, isn't it, Brian? Yes. Okay. So that nets uh, about $114,000 available in our budget for a position. If we went 32 hours a week, I did one at 50, one at 45, and one at 40. At $50 an hour, um, it's nine thousand five hundred and sixty dollars above what we currently have in our budget at forty five dollars an hour it is uh actually a savings of 139 dollars and at forty dollars an hour it's a savings of ninety eight hundred and forty four dollars in those, I should also say that my calculations are all based on worst case scenario as far as health and 
dental, I, I calculated the highest cost a family plan, essentially, for health and dental for everybody. That's smart. So if we ended up getting somebody that only needed a two-person plan, obviously these figures are less yep. than the maximum that I've got in here. So I think the you know the takeaway on this one for me is at uh so the hourly rate right now for 40 hours a week is $39.16 an hour. If we were able to offer a little bit more than that on an hourly rate, um, you know, we're still, I think we're still competitive in terms of the salaries that can be offered according to the salary survey that I've done, and I've got the results of that here too. Um, the final spreadsheet that I did was um, a combined, and that's based on 40 hours a week and leaving community economic development in the job description. So it's, again, it's combined. It's, you know, it'll be similar to what Brian's job description is now. That's in at $40, I mean, uh, 40 hours a week, um, I did $50 an hour, $45 an hour, and $40 an hour for that. In your cells under the $50 an hour, $45 and $40 scenario, your actual hour per week, like, <clears throat> cell is 32 not 40 Correct. Yeah, but the Oops. annual but hour the annual is 2080. And it's using annual and you're hours. using annual hours? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's multiplying yeah. by the... I was wondering if it was... Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. I sh I should have corrected that, but but it's the the forty dollars is being multiplied by the twenty eight. Okay. So the bottom line under that scenario is we would have enough money to pay the salary, plus I believe we would have enough money to cover the cost of an interim and enough money to cover the cost of the search as well with available funding. I'm not I'm not arguing in favor of one versus the other. So now that we have numbers out in front of us, I think we do need to settle on one versus I think we do need to settle on one versus the other because we need to know how we're going to push out who we want to hire. Yes. Um so I think we do need to have the discussion right now about do we want to combine the TA with an economic economic development or do we want to keep them separate? And okay. just just for um for additional information, I, I, I think with the with the two positions, the 38, the 32 hours a week and the 24 hour a week, there's enough money in our current budget to cover salaries but there's not enough money to cover the cost of an interim and the search okay with, okay. with the fully combined position there's i believe there would be enough money in the budget to cover everything i don't know if that helps or hurts but yeah well one thing i just want to throw out there and i understand what you did by adding the forty thousand and fifty thousand from this year's fiscal budget and the 50,000 that voters approved. But I really don't like that in the sheets because essentially if we did max it out because we have $90,000 next year, we would need to take that position. You know, the voters gave us approval for 50,000. We would have to almost double that next year just to stay par if we're planning on using the 40 and the 50 combined. Does that make sense what I'm saying? By saying that we have $90,000 for economic developer available might give the the board or maybe the public mentality that we could spend that if we spend that we need to get ninety thousand dollars in tax revenue next year for it whether it would pay for itself or not is a different argument i'm just saying yeah well i don't think we need a full night no but if you look at that sheet i mean even the 24 
hours a week at $25 an hour is still $7,000 more than we were budgeted. It is. More than we were approved this year. So we, we can't offer a nickel over $25 an hour. And even at that, we're going above budget if we're keeping them split. I, I don't disagree with what you're saying. My, my only thought is that when we had that discussion, I have a sneaking feeling that if we had asked for $75,000, it would have been approved. <laughs> That, that, the ifs that, and that two would, bucks to get you a cup of coffee downstream. The ifs and ands, woods and coulds, right? You know, maybe we should ask for one hundred seventy-five thousand. Yeah. So, are you arguing for combining? Yes, I think that's the only way that we can financially do it and maintain to the taxpayers what's being done. Okay. Yeah, I think that makes sense financially, and I, I kind of said from the beginning that. You know, we set our expectations high, and, and we find the right person, and this can be done well in person. Um, okay, so two for combining. Mark, do you have an opinion? I like separate. You like them separate? Do you want to argue okay. your and point? the waters. I, I just think the economic development is that important that um, I would like to have somebody here focused on that. I think when you have it all in one person, they've got so much on it. I mean, there are exceptional people out there. Are there exceptional people out there for what we're going to offer to pay? Well, I don't know. So I think we're better off with a person who's just devoted to economic development. Okay. Duncan? <laughs> I've been agonizing over this. I, in the best of all worlds, I 100% I agree with Mark. I think at the end of the day, the value that we would get out of having separate individuals may be worth the money. Having said that, I fully recognize and appreciate what Evan is saying. Um, and I don't, I don't know that that helps. <laughs> wow. I mean, from whatever standpoint you want to be at, I I hear what Mark's saying, um, and having somebody develop devoted to economic development is key. But what do, what do you think a quality individual is going to be looking to get an hour if we're keeping it separate? If we, if we're keeping it separate, yeah, forty five. All right, so we don't have an example at 45, but I'm just going to throw 40 There's in there. There's a 45 in there somewhere. No, not for the... Not for the community economic development. Just for, I mean, just for community economic development alone at 40, not at 45, we need $80,000. Yep. And I am hopeful that a person that is good at this is going to bring in enough money and grants that we're going to be able to say, you're going to administer this grant a, a good economic development person helps pay for themselves. Understood. In my in my mind, I understood. You run the same risk, I guess, between you know if you're looking for good and good, but you could get a good combined, right? It's a, yeah, I, it's a goal. I, I totally understand what you're saying. I just I just remember we had Leah, and you went to the town people and said we have this person who's brought in I don't know millions and millions of dollars to the town. Whatever she cost us, it was a, a bargain. And I would hope to somehow replicate close to that a person that's that I can say to the townspeople, yes, we're asking for eighty thousand bucks, but this person just brought three million dollars to Johnson. And some of that that they can use to admit, you know, a good a good economic development person can pays for themselves. That's that's how I, I that's how I think about these things. I understand what you're getting at. Yeah. And so I thought about it a lot. What'd you say? So I thought about it a lot. Yeah. Just for myself, I kind of started in a position of let's have two different people because of all the things you mentioned, having a person focused on it. Um, and I agree that person does their job well if they can pay for themselves. But then what Evan said is kind of what shifted me is, are we going to be able to find someone 
right now when everyone else is looking for the same thing, um, you know, that's able to focus on our needs the way you're talking about. Because if we're talking about hiring in a consultant that is also working with other towns, then that person isn't as focused on our, you know, I understand. development as we want them to be. So I I would rather, you know, get the get the one person who is fully dedicated to us, who's here, that, that's their that's their only gig, you know. Finding money. I uh, personally think that it is hard because I don't want to spend money either. Uh, I like to not spend money if I can get away with not spending money. However, I really, told, I think I told you all this at one point anyway, this winter really struggled with the thought of all that's going to be happening in the next two years and all that's going to be happening within the next two years really concerns me and it concerns me if we don't have two different people because we have so much happening at a town level and we're going to continue to at a town level um that i don't want town business to fog and disrupt the work of economic development i would much prefer sharing an economic development resource with another town if it ends up being that way um and having their mindset be on that development all the time than having somebody shift from operational day-to-day -to, -day to economic development. It's really easy to get stuck back in day-to-day. -day. Um, can I just ask you a question? Are you specifically referring to ARPO when you talk about like the next two years being very busy? I am not talking about only ARPA. I'm talking about the fact that we have lots of things happening on committee levels at the town that, that, are, gonna, that are gonna lead to economic development. We also have big things happening with our partners, also like our county partners, also economic development driven. Um, and I do see like an economic developer and a town administrator working hand in hand. But our town administrator dealing with the day to day, I don't think town administrator needs to be a full time, by the way. I like the reduced hours TA. I like the idea of a three to four day week for a TA if possible. Um, but I also think that we need an economic developer for three days too. And and yeah, I am thinking about ARPA funds, but I'm not just thinking about ARPA funds. Like ARPA funds enable a lot of people to do a lot of things. And like you pick your people. It's not about ARPA specifically and a focus on ARPA. It's about all the activity that ARPA is generating. Well, yeah, I get that. Uh, the board still has to make a decision because Duncan had mentioned earlier, and I believe you brought it up two meetings ago, that we could potentially use the ARPA funds as our general mm -hmm. general expenses okay. and operational, operational yeah. expense. There we go. Words are tough at night. Yeah, I got it. It's past my bedtime. Use your words. Um, <laughs> and <clears throat> take the you know, our, our operating budget and offset it into a it's not going to be a reserve fund because voters would have to put a reserve fund. It could be a restricted funds for, for purposes. But that's really a long-term game, not a two-year game. And that decision has been made. Yeah. So right. that decision alone changes the next two-year forecast drastically, in my mind. Okay. Yeah. But I will also add that the ARPA funds are the iceberg, but there's still a lot more federal money coming down the pike. The Infrastructure Act, there's just, I never in my life, that thing that Duncan and I went to, state was there saying, we have too much money, help us spend it. Literally, that was what- So why is they taking money away from the, the agency of transportation? That, all right, it's from everybody else. Well, we might fall off the cliff after two years. Dunk, years. Dunk it it is, we are going to fall. I mean, the reality is, it is going to fall off the cliff after two years. Yeah. yeah. In 2006, 2007, everything's going to be cut off. It's going to be a totally different problem. Not six. 
six or seven. What did yeah, I say? you said. But we might as well get the money while we can. You know, I, I to your point, Evan. I, I think um, another reason to have a separate person is right now we're subbing out admin for a lot of grants, like the community yep. development block grant, um, the, the the grant with Scribner Bridge. Um, we're subbing that out to LCPC, and I understand why we're doing that, but we could do that in house, and that that admin money. From that grant could go no, to funding that happen. position. Yeah. Um, so, so I think there, you know, I think there could be, I won't say cost savings, but I think there could be efficiencies of having two people. That sounds like Eric. And all, all things considered, if I, you know, again, if I, if money were no object, I would, I absolutely agree that two separate people are beneficial. I think it could conceivably be done with one, but that one person is going to have to really have, in my mind, if we go that route, we're going to need to go with a person that has their primary focus and experience in economic development and town administration as secondary. In my humble opinion, I think the skill sets of community economic development in the next few years are going to be more important and a person who's good can pick up the town administration part of things. Yeah. Well, well, Duncan, you're going to be in the hot seat in about five minutes. If you want to that. Uh, Alan Gould. I'm, uh, going to, I'm going to say right now that I think us two separate people are, are, are is the preference. Um, Alan Gould is not a potential candidate. He <laughs> was uh, somebody that you talked with before our last meeting. Yep. Uh, he represents Municipal Resource Inc. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And he specifically, that, that kind of sat with me too, said it should be a one person to do both jobs and you'll get a better candidate. And he's in the hiring side of things. I would love to sell a fairy tale. I would. Um, but I am only one vote. So if we're splitting it, we're splitting it. I won't bring it back up. Uh, I, I would try. not at this meeting. I'll wait till the next one. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm with Evan on this one, but if we are outvoted, we're outvoted. That's uh, how it goes. Oh, you may not be. So. Well, I'll just say that Alan, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say that Alan's comment was it should be one person. It, it, his comment was it certainly could be one person. And if you had the right person, they could do both. And his suggestion was to hire for somebody. Well, his suggestion was, if you decide to combine the positions, focus on the community economic development piece as the strength of it. He he did say, if you go with two different job descriptions, you could still put your ad together based on the notion that you were looking for a town administrator who had strengths in economic development and then you could make a decision you know based on a candidate pool that came in whether you wanted to separate and i, I think we still could conceivably do that um, but i think for advertising purposes we got to pull a plug tonight on hiring somebody we want one person that works 56 hours a week there you go. I'm all no for <laughs> without without overtime. We didn't put that in the budget. Sorry, um, but that point, like I would, I'm for promoting economic development in a TA position. But like when we talk about candidates, we need to talk about candidates who are good at saying no, because all that other stuff can't cloud. Like we have to take this opportunity and it can't cloud the advancements in economic development that we need right now. It has to be focused on economic development first, I think. I and then I, and then I, I think, and then I think so too. And I think that, and then I think about, oh look, the spider decided to move. Mm -hmm. um, I also think about what our calendar is of things that need to be done every month and 
We have contracts that need chasing. We have RFPs that we push often. We have all kinds of stuff. It just comes up all the time. Policy issues, coordinates, updates. All kinds of stuff, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> I just don't know. I just am not convinced, I guess, that this person can put those blinders on if they're responsible for both roles. And that's my concern. I guess we're waiting on a word from you, Duncan. I, I think I I think I weighed in. I, I, I think you all things to. considered, I'd like I think it's I think the bang for the buck is going to be better if we have two individual people. Okay. I think that's where we're at. Right. Two, two, two. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I think so. Everybody's I don't want to commit. Damn it. But yes. Um, committing. I was out of town and lost folks like crazy last week. All right. So Do you want I, to formalize that as a you know as an actual vote or I think the job descriptions are already separate, aren't they? We don't need to Okay, much. here's my can I just talk about my hesitance in this? Sure. I, I get all wishy-washy <laughs> because because if we get candidates that I don't want to lock us into this forever because if we get candidates that seem to prove one thing or another, I want to be open to change. I think, you know, what Duncan said about what, um, or you're not forgetting his name, I said, I, I think you were, you were correct in that you were saying advertise jointly, advertise for both, and then make the decision based on the outcome. Yeah. Um, if we don't get any applicants that stand out to us as someone who has the and the experience and the skill sets needed to do this, then we try to hire it separately. But if there's someone in that list who really stands out to us, yeah, I think we should give ourselves the option to look at that. All right. So the plan is to have no great plan, but <laughs> let's be number four, guys. Wishy washy. But we're still, we still do have those. For God for I'm, okay, I'm, just so you know, I am still with the two. <laughs> the, the door's not, the door's the not closed on two, we're going to advertise it separately and keep an open mind. Yeah. Are you guys comfortable That's, with that? If Assuming we can actually pick a consultant to go to the next step to do the job search? That's asking an awful lot. Are you, are you comfortable with the idea uh, of doing yeah. that, you know, the search predicated on I'm fine somebody that has... Community economic development experience. Sure, of course. Yeah. You, uh, you should be asking me, not them. All right, You're asking me, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Mark, 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 Mark. He's still he's peaceful. Are you deciding? <laughs> the meeting's going to end in three minutes, everybody. But I'm with you. Okay, ready. You don't have that much left. I'm out the door. <laughs> Ten administrator search contract agreement. All right. All uh, right. I I'd want to take one second. I'm sorry. Uh, as long as we're changing topics on this, Duncan, I'm sorry, I did get confused about the conversations we were having about which documents you had sent me. So I, you did send me the documents about the last topic, and I didn't include them. So I, I got confused about which ones. Okay. So apologies. Can I have your left finger? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Baby, laughs> <baby laughs> Don't be asking for an eyeball. Yeah. Okay, next up, uh, town administrator search contract agreement. Do we need to do we need to approve the two um, job descriptions, or did we just do that? I think it's done. Oh yeah. Okay, sorry. Those go with job descriptions. Are you good with the job description? Correct. You're good. Are you good? We sent those out. Yeah. You've yeah. read them and you're good with them. Yeah. Okay. And Mark. Peaceful. I would I would move to approve both Not job descriptions as sent out to the board. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. aye. Duncan? Okay. You an aye, Duncan? Yes, aye. 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 Eyes have it. I've, uh, got, I've got one good one. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be smart for that. Okay. Search contract agreement. Yeah, well, ain't that good? <clears throat> I would like to thank Duncan for the amount of time that he put in yep. getting three, from what I can tell, pretty good quotes. Yeah, here, here. Yeah, I think they're all, all um, good proposals. I, oddly enough, lean towards 
Hold DLC on. Really? Yeah. I don't expect that from you. We need Why is that? that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't embark on a tree. Only one reason. <laughs> it's only one. Is it because it's an acronym? <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, you like VLTCs, CTs, C's and Tones. Uh, any other opinions? I actually like the rec the I'm name them correctly. MRI. MRI. Municipal resources. Yes, I like I like them, and I probably have a little bit should have guessed different that. opinion. <laughs> you didn't have guessed that just because of my discussions with Duncan. Honestly, um, I felt like they provided some valuable information over time. Yep. Um, One thing I really liked about them over the other candidates, they do have the ability to provide interim services. Yeah. So in a pinch, if we got to a pinch point, I guess it would be the only one we would want. And I think they, I think they would be willing to do that anyway, Evan. Regardless of whether we went with them or not. The other reason I like them and over v, uh, VLCT is because VLCT has conflicts of interest because they contract with other towns. They do. The potential contracts conflict of interest. I've never heard and heard of. Eaton Peabody. Yeah, um, so they're a main firm, right? Augusta Maine. Yeah, I got there. <clears throat> I did a search on the um, <clears throat> International City Managers Association webpage, and there are hundreds of them. And the vast majority of them were out west or down south. There were only a few that were even on the east, eastern seaboard that advertised, you know, with them. Um, I, I did get a response from the a New Jersey firm that said they were going to submit a proposal, but they never did. So, I don't know. This guy, Don Garish from um, Maine, I had a very good conversation with him. I think he's very talented. He's got to be older than dirt because he's, you know, he started before I did. Um, but, uh, very, very, very good experience. One, one thing I liked about his proposal, which was very different than either. Well, Google didn't talk about this, and this is something to to think about. VLCT talks about a committee approach to do the first round. Um, the guy uh, Don Garish from Peabody said, "We advise you not to do that. We would rather have a public meeting and solicit." input from people about what they want to see. We would advise having an employee meeting and soliciting their input on what they'd want to see. But at the end of the day, it's the select board's decision. You should do the interviews and you should make the hire. That was, you know, for what it's worth, that's his opinion. I kind of like that approach in, in some ways. Um, but I think one other thing is. So VLCT uh, suggests the hiring committee, and, and so did MRI. I don't remember that. MRI did not. They, did they don't not suggest right. doing anything. They did a screening. They did a screening. Yeah. So it's really up to us what. They, so the other thing to understand about the MRI proposal, they have, they have two basic concepts. One is this limited um, recruitment assistance overview. And then they have a full-blown recruitment service. Their full-blown recruitment service looks a whole lot more like a BLCT or a Peabody um, approach, cost-wise and complexity. So we're getting sort of a assistance light with, with not that I think there's anything wrong with that. Um, I I did have a really good feeling talking to Alan Gold. And, but the other thing to think about this, I thought about it at the end of the day at 4,000 bucks, you know, that's 40 hours worth of work. That's not a lot of time to put into something like this. At 105 bucks an hour, it's you know a little less than 40 hours. Even at 5,000, it's, you know, it's not a huge number of hours. But that's because we would be doing things like the job description, because in his full assessment, he has like job description, advertising, the screening, 
<clears throat> I feel like I'm missing things, but other things really profile, the community profile. profile, job profile. Yeah. And I feel like we already have at least the foundations for some of that. I think we do. And if we if we went with one of the other firms, VLCT in particular specifically said if you get the more you do, the less you're right. they're based on hundred bucks an hour too. Yeah. So the more you do, the less your total bill is going to be. They also, you know, their price gave me sticker shock when I first looked at it, but they're including in their total estimate the cost of a background check and the cost of advertising and the cost of, you know, incidental, you know, this and that and the other thing. So okay. their, you know, their 12 to 15 is, you know, their base fee is 10, yeah. which is the same as PVA. It's It's certainly more than MRI. But I think they're proposing to do more things for that 10. So are you a VLTC positive? All things considered, I would, I would, I'm really surprised to hear you say that you like VLC. Well, you know, what that said at the beginning is kind of sticking with me here. Uh, I like <laughs> what they offered. Yeah, I really like acronyms. <laughs> But the fact that they'll have conflict of interest for MRI won't. She's got me on the fence. Well, but the, thing is the MRI do the same thing. They're going to solicit. The difference is, but the difference to me is that MRI can solicit to the people that are in the positions right now, where VLCT has that conflict of like they're still going to advertise widely. But people should be careful about what they're saying to VLTC the if they're contracting through a town, because they represent the town first if they're contracting. There was a dagger. You definitely stuck me with it. Oh, good. I enjoy I, that. You said much. that, and something happened in my head, and it just kind of tied my tongue. The other thing that I had heard um, from somebody who I won't say their name publicly, but I had heard that. MRI was more of a corporate feeling experience from a candidate perspective um, than the league was. Um, and frankly, I kind of like that. You mean from the candidate's perspective? Mm -hmm. okay, well, it just felt a little more corporate. And the response was, it's not that it's good or bad either way, but it's that that was the way it had felt. Um, Jim, <clears throat> I'd be happy going with MRI. I, I, as I said in my email, I suspect at the end of the day it's going to cost more than like a thousand dollars for the advertising. I don't think that's a realistic number. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to cost us more than that. So if we go with them, my only thought is, you know, his four to five thousand dollars plus a thousand for advertising, that may be lower than what we actually pay. But mm -hmm. right. Even if it does go up, there's a lot of room between his and the other proposals. Not that that's the only thing we should be considering, but yeah, I like that. Where you said, Mark, exit with <clears throat> spending the money. You know, I I think I'm around where I would probably go. All right, that's my sense. Do you think what? Yeah, all right. I think I would go with him because I want I. Whatever we spend now, it's ten thousand or twenty thousand or twenty five thousand. It's you know I can be as stingy as anybody when times are tight. Right now, time of the clutch. Anybody got anything? Is that truck he's driving? Like <laughs> as stingy as anybody. <laughs> he's driving a diesel. We both got the same one ton truck, but he's got a diesel. But anyway, uh -huh. the fact of the matter is that this is this is really really important for the future of the town. I want to get the best person in the door we can. Get. Um, so I'm not going to quibble over five thousand bucks right now. I feel like them being experienced in the screening process is also a benefit. Like I like the idea that they screen. Of what? I like the idea of them being the first level screening process and not a committee. I very much like that, actually. Yeah, me too. So I'm going to do an oddball one here. You're going to change your vote. Um, 
I did change my vote. Don't second it if you don't agree with it. <laughs> I am going to motion that Duncan Hastings represents the select board in signing a contract with Municipal Resource Inc. not to exceed $12,000 in value or cost. Okay, fine. Whatever. Wow. <laughs> Okay, we have a motion. Does anyone just the big now? <laughs> no, that was just a show up. He already knows what the contract is. Like, like, a second. <laughs> well, uh, okay, to are be you clear? That is more than the original quote, but like you said, there might need to be a little bit of wiggle room and we don't have the time. So you are limited at that number. And the thing is, yeah. him signing the contract isn't going to change the amount in the contract. It just right. means that the bill amount would be more. Right. So we're allowing spending up to that amount. Right. Um, do you want to sign the contract? Uh, I personally think you put in all the vote work. Do you not want to? Let me rephrase. I would be happy to have the chair sign it. I'm happy to do the background work necessary to get it to a point where she can sign it. I don't mind if you sign it at all. Uh, if we give you permission to. I, I don't. I, it's fine with me one way or the other. All right. Okay. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any I'll further discussion? Probably amended up to fifteen, but I'm moving on. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes, I should. You, you don't have abstain? to abstain. You don't have to abstain. Yeah. Okay. Aye. Well, mostly because I want. You don't have a conflict of interest. Right. We all have the same interests. Right. Yeah. Thank you for your work, Duncan. Yeah. Thank you. you really. Appreciate. Yes. Yeah, no problem. Step so, up here. I agree with you. It's important stuff. So ah, it's the most important stuff. Okay, interim next steps. Um, so I can report on in general terms on an interim. Um, I'm gonna pass this spreadsheet out, and I don't think it has any names on it. So pass it around. Um, if we want to get into a discussion about the person. I think that would be appropriate to do an executive session. And he did say that he would be available to take a phone call if we wanted to. Even at this late hour? Uh, I don't know about that. I don't it's 9.30. 9.30, he might. I mean, he's been a town manager for 30 years. He's probably used to. I'm I'm late at it, but, That's rude. Um, we, you know, we can certainly go into executive session and you know, right. not even talk to him. But if we want, if we want to mention a name, yeah, um, then mm -hmm. I think we need to do that in executive session. Right. The spreadsheet I handed out was uh, his uh, discussion with him. Um, he would prefer to work as an hourly employee, um, and it works out to an effective hourly rate. Uh, 70 bucks, 70, 50 an hour. After all benefits and yeah, everything. So his, his base rate would be 60 and basically all we'd be paying is, is FICA and I threw a little bit in there for workers going up on employment, et cetera. And that, that works out to an effective hourly rate of $70 an hour, 70, 50 an hour. Versus the 85 that we would have with um, uh, Municipal Resource Inc. Um, and I, I could tell you, you know, from personal experience, I know the guy. Um, my experience of him is, as I said in my email, he's mild of manner, but, um, you know, focused. And like I said, he's been in the same town for over 30 years. You know, and he's been a town manager, too. And, you know, to, to survive 30 years as a town manager in a town means you are working with your select board. You know, you're not pissing the select board off. So I don't know what your thoughts um, are, but. My personal thoughts are split. Uh, I would like to start the next meeting off with an executive session, if he could attend, great. If he could attend by phone, that's fine. And have item number two. I, I don't like starting meetings out with executive session, but I feel like it's only fair. We could start like 15 minutes early. Yeah, and I would like there to be a potential 
action item, I guess. Yeah, got it. For fund expenditures. Yeah. That's what I'd like to do. We can go into executive session and discuss with him now if you would prefer, but I would like it warned a little bit more. Um, I have no issue with that. Yeah. Well, I think he probably won't either. Are yeah, you, doesn't like are you okay with contacting that individual and trying to set up yeah. for our next I, I certainly would be. I certainly would be. I, I, I don't know if it's worth. Let's do it at six o'clock and then Mark for pizza. Yeah. <laughs> right. Good. <laughs> I would bring meat. I would be invited to the meat. I mean, I think we don't have to buy it. But no, we really should do it just at six o'clock. Let's do it at six. Yeah. Yeah. And then we hopefully have like a few minutes break in between everybody showing up for the regular meeting. Good. Are people. I will find pizza. Are people generally. I'm fed. Amenable no, I'm gonna to me. this idea, or are you? Um, are there things I'm about a, this that give you heartburn? I am comfortable with it. I've never hired an interim, and I'm not sure if they do monthly contracts or if they do a chunk of time, or if this is just kind of open ended whenever the town finds some employee with good. I assume it's Those a time and material for a specific time box with a possibility of extension is what I would think. That would yeah, say. an offer of employment letter with or, or whatever. It's not really an offer of employment, it's more a contract service. I think I would think of it as well, but well, this it's is not, very much but, like because he doesn't if, if we do it as a contract service. That would be an employee. There would not be an employee relationship, which he is looking for. He's looking for that. Okay. Okay. Because, and I think there's actually personally so temporary think there's an advantage to that because I think I think it would be our, to our advantage overall to have him covered under our public officials liability policies, rather than if he's a separate contractor, we would want him to carry his own insurances, and it would get more. Expensive. It would get more expensive in a hurry. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure okay, that that's fine. an advantage. Okay. No. You have bill for crowning, Bob. What's that? It's going to be on the clock for travel time. He did not say that. That would be that would be a game changer for me. It could it could make a difference. Yeah. Well, that's a couple, yeah. co yeah. couple hours of travel time every time you come to work. That would be something that happens to us. I, I, I know back. when the village hired Sandy... Um, Whatever his last name was, um, he did. He charged a hundred dollars an hour, and plus mileage, and it was, you know, the going rate for yeah. But it's just mileage. That's not that bad. Yeah, mileage is sixty miles. The hourly rate for yeah. No, I don't think he'd be charging the hourly rate. I think it's just mileage. But I I can verify those things in advance, and those are things that you know you can ask him in the executive session. Yeah, but. So this does not have any confidential information on it. I don't think it does. It, I don't see anything that is. <clears throat> um, are you, we all copacetic with 14? Is that the only person at this point that has shown a significant interest? That is the only person that I have been able to find in reaching out to people retired or soon to be retired. Um, a couple of them have said, if not for the fact that, you know, right. timing didn't wise, work. Right. they they would be interested, which I actually took to be fairly positive, mm -hmm. um, even though it didn't work out for us directly yep. right now. It, we do have the old from MRI too, so it's not right. it's not like we're not comparing it to something yes. into an appointment. And under just to be clear, under our own personnel policy, if we if we were to go along this concept, this would be more along the lines of an emergency appointment, um, which which could obviate the need for public advertising, et cetera. So I just want to be clear that that's part of the reason I asked the question is, is that a path you want to go down? Personally, I'm comfortable with it because I think we need it. 
um, sooner than later. And I just don't know that we have the luxury of advertising. Um, and I also don't want to lose the guy yeah. um, for want of trying to meet some right. amorphous goal. Yeah. Okay. You've yeah. just identified that person by saying it was a guy. <laughs> Town administration. <laughs> I watch what pool is like what 80%? Reach yeah, out to the woman. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. You know the field down. Right. Uh and narrow down to like 80 people instead right. of yeah. <laughs> instead of 85. Yeah. 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 <laughs> John's is an hour from everything. Yeah. Uh, it's the center of the year. Okay. Economic, are we good with that? Is there anything else on interim? Economic development round two. How come I have it in my calendar for next week and this is saying the 17th? That's the first thing you want to bring up is uh, our facilitators have asked if we could move to May 17th. I had changed the time from 1230 to 3. I thought you were going to get it on May 17th. I thought you were already telling me you took the day off for it. Your yeah, it took, the, it took May 10th off, off and not May 17th. Happy birthday? Happy birthday. I actually can't do the 17th either. I will have a dentist appointment. There's no way I can do it. <laughs> no. I guess I don't even have to weigh in. <laughs> I, I was a, just about to push add. We don't need a quorum. I want to be there. So let's yeah. check with Beth on her schedule. Um, the Shoot, following week, the 18th, the 29th. PTO. Oh, that's okay. When did we have it scheduled originally? Was it the 10th? 10th. Yeah, for next week. Nine days from now. I think it is. It's also a joint meeting. Yeah, a joint meeting is the same day, which was part of why I didn't think it would be too controversial to move it so that we're not meeting from dawn till dusk of the same day. <laughs> Well, well honestly, I would didn't care because we knew that when we scheduled the joint meeting. So but, the 17th doesn't sound good for anybody. Does the 24th work? Yep. Works great. But the, the uh, 10th is just totally, they couldn't do it on the 10th as well. Are you saying. back on the 24th? Yeah. Oh, I'll be back on the 18th. But I mean, I won't be. That's fine. Where are you going to be? I'll be in the Dominican Republic. Really? Well, I'm not gonna be able to make a midday anyways. Where's the baby? Last time. <laughs> okay. okay. I was in some people have um, jobs. So, work, okay, here's okay? the thing. The thing with this the thing with this meeting is that uh, frankly I'm pretty disappointed that it's changing, but since it's so late, I think it has to. Um it is more important that the people that we invited can come than a lot of us, right? The majority of us doesn't do not need to be there. People we invited, it's really important that they can come. Like our attendee, our attendee list are the people who can make this successful. And if they can't make it, what is the point? So let's keep it on the subject. I mean, I, they haven't. This seventeenth is about facilitators. It has nothing to do with our attendee list. I believe that our facilitators were invited, but they were not able to make the meeting tonight. I believe that it is motivated by requests from the attendees. Okay, we need to make the attendee list happen. I will share an invite for Google Doc that we've created for. For keeping track of who facilitators myself and Pat Ripley, who we've reached out to and who's confirmed. Should we pick more than one date? Just who are the people? Yeah, we should. Are you are you available on the seventeenth? According to my calendar, my I mean, I certainly could be there too. You know, I mean, well, it's it's a really, isn't it? I'm not, I'm not doing it. Doesn't have. So. Yeah, yeah. Be boys. Just getting older. Yeah, Wednesday is your birthday. 
You know my calendar is bad. 67. <laughs> I guess so. So what are we doing? Who are the attendees and what dates can we choose? Go ahead, Brian. We can propose a new date. Um, the attendees that we have right now For is, the 17th? Well, we haven't approved the 17th as a new date, so... The attendees right now we have for the 10th. So... If wait a second. Wait, wait, wait. I, yeah, let's get to the bottom of this. The attendees that we have have said that they're interested in attending. We're changing dates, so I don't think that the date... To my knowledge, the date doesn't matter at this point. Most of the attendees have not confirmed in person that they've confirmed someone from their office will come. Okay. So we have someone from LCPC, Welch's office, Sanders office, um, Balance office, BLCP, uh, Economic Development at ACCD, Housing at ACCD, uh, NBRC, so the Northern Borders Regional Commission, mm -hmm. and don't remember the office for the, there we go, Vermont Department of Forest, Parks, and Recreation. Okay. And then you had sent out, you've got some additional local people. Uh, we've got, we've had a couple people uh, from Johnson Works say that they're interested. Um, and Shane, you had some suggestions for some folks that you wanted to, you were thinking about survivorship bias and wanted to invite some folks that, yeah, there's a couple of local business yes. owners that they had. Who are you there. thinking? Uh, well, I'm thinking Allison. Um, I guess they're still doing yeah. something with that building, but uh, folks there. Um, oh, I, furry. Yeah. I would, uh, whoever it is that one, I'm not sure last name, but um, I would love to talk to, um, I would love to have the new owners of uh, the First row building, the uh, old phone name. Um, so you don't know them? I don't know them. Uh, holding that, we can get information off of the property transfer. But um, yeah, but, and then uh, there's just, you know, existing business owners. Um, I think there was one, one other name that I uh, had. I won't get it to you. Yeah. Uh, so I'd like to invite Bill Hogue from Two Sons. Uh, I talk to Bill quite often about all things business in our local area. He has lots of good information and feedback. He'd be good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I have to convince him to come, <laughs> but I think I can convince him to come. I'll move him a cup of coffee. <laughs> right. Yeah. Give him a piece of bread. Um, and then also I've been, I talked to Sophie Zadakdi of the, the chancellor for the Mont College system. Um, I talked to her on Friday and I'd like to invite a few people from, uh, three people very specifically from the college about community outreach with different areas of purpose in their roles um, that Sophie connected me with. So I'd like to include them and in invite you. Like I said, I'll share the list that we have with you, and uh, you can either assign it to us, or if you want to contact them directly, we can just have you as a contributor. Yeah. About yeah. somebody from, uh, maybe you already said them, and I didn't hear it, but somebody from Loyal Fiber Net? No, they're not included. That's a great idea. That's a very good idea. Of course it is. I was going to suggest the uh, Mobile Housing Partnership as well, to be our state housing people. And the person I was thinking of was Greg Stefanski. He hasn't been. Greg is good. Greg isn't at uh, the Housing Partnership, but. No, I, I, I the, the separate name that I was okay. thinking of something to loop in. Yeah. You know, Where is he nowadays? Family Center? No, I, no, I think United, United Way. United Way. Yeah. Um, the other thing, that, planning commission. Did you invite the planning commission? We had talked about them a while back. Somebody from the planning commission should be part of this. Yeah. 
I, I, I believe that I had a conversation with Paul, but a vague somebody from planning commission should come to this thing that we're planning that had didn't have a lockdown date at the time. Yeah. And obviously the, I assume some village trustees are gonna we can invite them. I think we should ask for a represent representative. Right. Not a whole board of people. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, if they had a whole board, they'd have to warn it on the separate one. Yeah, that's true. Oh, 16. 16 plus the select board. So we're talking like 25 people ish. Which is why I had all those logistics questions. Am I bringing pizza for this Right. Yeah, no. Well, How about donuts? So I did review the, some of the logistics questions that you had. I'm going to pull it up here so that I don't have to. It's late. I don't want to. Let me just read it. Sure. So the logistic questions I had is. Um, we need to make sure we're prepared to address current status, vision, and obstacles for each item and be prepared with specific and detailed information. We need to confirm the list of participants. Um, we need to send formal invitations to the attendees. Um, with a, a formal invite, just reading through the details. Um, Do you want me to answer these kind of as we go? I guess. Sure, sure. Okay, okay, yep. So back to current status vision obstacles. So they changed our language a little bit, but not the real me. Ah. Uh, and kind of rebalanced on time. It doesn't leave us a lot of time for um, you know, the goals and visions, uh, a little bit more time for current status, but we do want to be well prepared on that. We can start another spreadsheet, maybe where we brainstorm a couple of ideas, uh, but we should, we should plan on who's speaking and uh, timing it out so that we, we can fit within our allotment, a lot of time. Um, talking about that the 17th might not work for us, I will remind you that the 23rd is my last day. Okay. So, if it's supposed to be on the 23rd, I don't know if you want me to present on the 17th, but if, it, if it's the... I think for consistency, we need to have somebody else present each of these anyway. Because if we have follow up conversations, you want to have the right white person. Yep. So, yep. Yeah, I was ex I was thinking you would probably want to do that, um, but I just wanted to point out that if it's yeah, yeah, that I, I will not be here for the later one. Mm -hmm. um, but we still need to like collectively agree on status, vision, obstacles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then. Uh, what was your next logistics? Um, so we talked about confirming the list of participants and unconfirmed representation from town and committees. Okay. You need to invite representatives from planning, blah, blah, blah. Um, and sending out the formal invitation. So that, that was kind of our purpose for creating the list that we have right now is Dividing up based on people who have contacts at different offices so that we can get better responses. Um, and then uh, Vermont Council on Rural Development is going to do the formal invitation at the end. So we're going to work on the spreadsheet to these are all the people who have confirmed, have soft confirmed. Here's the formal invitation. Here's, you know, full details yeah. uh, that they'll send out. Um, Space required. This room 
we would we held rather large meetings here before the Moyle FiberNet. We held uh, some we held a couple meetings on CUDs and fiber networks for the county, uh, and we had a lot of attendance at those meetings. So we could host we could probably host it here. Okay. Um, during the day, I'm not expecting a lot of guests. Uh, I think it'll mostly be our invited parties, and, and probably not that many people. Not not that much of the public uh, for Wednesday afternoon. I know I need to look nicer because it looks pretty awful. But yeah, yep. we can spruce it up a little bit. Yep, and it's a good opportunity to clean out broken chairs and desks. <laughs> yeah, public works crew gone. Yeah, is that is that great? Cabinet been there for years, and I just no, that's a relatively that's new one. I no decorative detail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, let's keep talking. I think cozy or story. Have we selected uh, a date yet? No, we haven't. It's okay. Let's keep going. We're we're well, well, so we'll get to the list. Then we'll select a date. Then the the other part that I remember from this was uh, refreshments. Uh, okay. Susan is going to be able to make a Costco run. Well, bringing the cookie. When we're delaying this, Susan will be able to make a Costco run uh, and provide, you know, water, seltzer, cookies, and a little meat and cheese platter from the deli. Oh, okay. And we need some like throwaway cheap tablecloths. If we're going to use this space too, we'll be well away. Deli, deli, deli. I'll get them. The I don't care. <laughs> what? What is that? He's singing. Okay, dates. Twenty uh, fourth is what a one date I heard. But Brian's like perfect date. No, it's a bad date. I would like to attend, but could be the twenty third. Could be the twenty second. For me, it could be any day that week. Frankly, any day the week of the twenty second. Yep, but I just need to book my calendar. You know, pretty quickly if it's going to happen one of those days. I can't do it the twenty second. Not the twenty. Okay, so the twenty third, twenty fourth, twenty third, twenty fourth, twenty fifth. Let's do the twenty fourth. How about we just give a range of those dates and see? Yeah. We can attend. So twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. Possible date. After the twenty third, I understand. I'm sorry, this is we're in the same time frame. Yeah. Uh, the 12 30 to 3 o'clock. Uh, we are actually having a wedding here on the morning of the 17th. Really? Yeah. Here? Yep. Who? Oh. Don't, Don't remember who. Congratulate them. Yep. So we'll go back to the 10, will, we go back to 10 to 12 30. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's fascinating. We would go back to 10 to 30. That, that would be my assumption that we only That's change so it off of 10 a.m. To the wedding. Okay. It's probably a just the peace wedding. It's probably not a big do. Okay. City Hall. I got married at City Hall. I think that's it then. That's all we need to cover for tonight, right? Oh, uh, I, I did have one more. One. one more date? No, I do. I haven't moved on from this topic. Done. Uh, last week I had a regional emergency management meeting with the other towns, and one of the things was EOT presenting about the rail trail, and I just wanted to let you guys know that they're mowing it twice this year. Do we know? Do we have any idea when? They only did it once last year, Yeah. We did. Oh. No, they did it once. They did it once. They did it once. At the end of it. And then I think we might have done it twice. Okay. They're they're targeting June and August. And they can plan for July. I have a pretty good contact. I I believe her name was Jackie Casino. She was a really nice lady. She's the head of Jackie Trail Trail Division. Cool. I I will say that they did a great job of mowing when they mowed. They did a great job. I, yeah. You know, it'd be really great if you could get your attachment attached with the side of your bike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little simple bike. Yeah. 
You build up enough speed. But... You know, right. Really? He's after for energy generation. Nearly the amount. The That's the same way from the shoulders. I still got a, a serious bruise on my left knee from crashing. Just watch the poison pipes that move around the state. It just drives me crazy. It's terrible. Okay. So, are we done? We have a lot for the next meeting. I have a whole bunch of items in my list, and Brian write down things I didn't write. Down. I'm super happy. So, ready? Library fund. If we could get Stacey library up. fund. Okay, so Stacy, are you going to reach out to Stacy? I reach out to Stacy Waterman. I pretty much have the library trustees. So I just want them to. We be specifically present. want the treasure treasurer for the funding discussion. So Stacy Waterman. Um, so library funds for next meeting, ARPA funds and reserve, how we're gonna, if we're gonna apply the operating budget, what we're gonna do. So um, that, sorry to interrupt. Katie Buckley is on our schedule for next meeting to speak about that. About ARPA that funds? Be, yeah, okay, yeah, perfect. Yeah. So we, we've already Good. Yeah. planned for that. Okay, yep, great. Um, dilapidated building update to David, I have this. I'm going to talk to him. Um, revolving loan fund discussions. Why did I write that? Uh, Duncan wanted an update on the revolving loan oh, fund. Yeah. And without preparation, I don't have a meaningful update to offer. Brian, and specifically, what did you want about that, Duncan? Well, in, in the minutes that I looked at from last year, there was a discussion about Brian, I think made that this made the observation that we owed them a report and we hadn't loaned out much money. Yeah, um, and I think I made the motion to request an extension due to COVID and oh, yeah, extension. other extenuating circumstances. Yeah. And we also talked about trying to push the the RLF out in the public, like on Facebook or from Porch Forum or you know. Get the word out that there is an RLF and try and encourage people to use the funds. <clears throat> okay. Um amend not E one nine one one ordinance. Do we want to talk about amending the road naming ordinance or no? The I policy. Would recommend not, not ordinance, policy. No. No, okay, fine. So we want we do we do need to put it publish and you have that on your list and we need to get it in our books too. Yes. Um, this doesn't need to be an agenda item, but we need to figure out guest access. Can you email the tech support people and tell them that this can't keep happening? We need their help. I have to two seconds and then like I can you, give you a date. I can't even get on. I couldn't get on either. And if it's because our neighbors are using guests, like I don't actually care. We shouldn't have a limit to using guest access. I agree. I think there's somebody out in the parking lot. Some oh, people right across the road. Right yeah. across the street. Or next door. There's but no password on it, and there's no limitations on what people could use it for. Then people could just be using it for Netflix or whatever like right. houses. And but I don't care. Like the signal isn't strong enough that they're doing anything significant. And who cares? It's public access. But yeah, I, I have an appointment with them this week for yeah, evaluating well, all of this network and discussion of the upgrades that we have asked for yeah, previously. Yeah, okay. Um, we're going to update. We're going to update all of the publish um, for all of the vacancies. This is just a to do, not not, not an agenda okay. item, although we should follow up on it next meeting. But make all of the outstanding vacancies with a reference to the chair in which people can contact. Um, why did I write Justin and Anna? Then it, it, he's out. Oh, yeah, that that was why we got expert. Ah, that's why we got it. Yeah, energy. Um, so I think we need to follow up on our energy discussions. And I then know. I've got in my notes about that too. Did I sign up to do something with energy? No. For some reason I have it written. No, down. Howard kept it. Continue. Okay. No. Yeah, you did. Continue. Just give a whisper a list of things for Mark to do. Um, executive session with the interview and a potential action item following the executive session. Yes. That's a six o'clock. 
six o'clock. So we already have next meeting scheduled. Yep, we have a couple of things other also, I think. Ryan, do you need a calendar? On the yeah, annual let's... calendar. So I move we adjourn. No, no we go to the Okay, meeting adjourned. Do you have this? Oh, I buddy. Let me, what? if you, you don't need that copy, I'll just take oh, it with me. Ask. Or you can. Question. Okay, wait, sorry, we're not adjourned yet. Sorry, go ahead, Evan. Would the board be interested in me trying to find out if we could get a network security audit done for free? Yeah, uh, please. Although yes. I think the town and village own that halfway. Wow, it's free. I have to do that. Yeah, it could be a topic of discussion, but I think through emergency management, there's going to be opportunities for free network evaluation. Just do it. It's emergency management, you take care of all of our entity. You're going to find. All right. So I have permission to talk with you. Okay. okay. Meeting adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank you.